Why has Triple H been so successful? Why is Triple H running WWE better than Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard on Monday and Friday night? Long-term booking. guys thank you so very much for joining us right here on tuesday night it is april 9th 2024 i am your host jd from new york as always joined by my co-host for tuesday night titans mr andrew baydala what is going on man jd what's going on with you my man ah man i got uh half of a voice left after this past weekend man what a wrestlemania 40 we had 200,000 views I saw you did. We had 600 people plus live at the two-day tailgate. I was in two states at once on Sunday. We had a hell of a turnout. We did a lot. We did Friday. We did Thursday with Taker. I, you know, I'm truly humbled. Uh, a lot of people came over and shook our hands, wanted to take pictures at the tailgate. Had an absolute blast. It was a great WrestleMania weekend. Was in the building Saturday. Flew home on Sunday. Had a blast with you. It was just a good weekend, man. It was a damn good weekend. Yeah, I was uh, I was very pleased with the way everything went down. Um, minus the weather on Saturday, which was the, oh. I would say, the, the biggest thumbs down aspect of the entire weekend. It was fucking cold at that Saturday tailgate. But you guys... Uh, like being in the venue. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't go to the show. Drew went to the show on Saturday, did not go to the show on Sunday, flew home uh, after the tailgate that we did on Sunday to go be with his son and watch Cody finish his story, which was absolutely tremendous. We're going to get into all that discussion. Uh, but I want to thank you guys first and foremost for joining us on Saturday and Sunday. The majority of you came out on Sunday because that's when TNT was advertised. The turnout... Uh, I told this guy, the turnout, I wasn't really knowing what to expect, but the turnout blew me away. And uh, the love that yeah. you show, not only me when I do these types of things, but now, you know, now Drew is a part of it, and he doesn't believe it. It's fucking unbelievable. It's overwhelming. I'm so humbled and appreciative of you guys. It was tremendous. So thank you. And it's not going to be the last we do something like that because that was one hell of a turnout, man. No, we had a blast. I had a blast doing the live show. We're going to do something uh, for an AEW pay-per-view coming up shortly. Maybe SummerSlam. We'll talk about everything. Uh, nothing is set in stone. But, yeah, I was truly humbled by the turnout. It was great to do a show in front of live crowd, people who were interacting. We took live Q&A. It was great to hear live responses. And it was also very humbling to have people co you know, walk over to you and, and say, you know, hey, you guys – uh, got me through a dark time or something like that. Like, that's just insane. We're just two goofballs talking wrestling. So I appreciate it. Uh, and I thank everybody for their support. And thank you for spending your hard-earned money with us. Truthfully, it's humbling. I appreciate it. Yeah, and shout out to Tailgate Joe. I'm sure he's not watching or listening, but uh, the food was excellent. The music was uh, on point. You know, he fit the vibe and the atmosphere very well. The staff was unbelievable. The drinks were great. I mean, if you guys uh, are looking for something to do WrestleMania next year, man, tailgate Joe, I, I, he made a believer out of me. I'll tell you that right now. Drew was uh, yeah. hyping him up all this time. I'm like, I don't know, man. Let's see. And he blew me out of the water. Yeah, Honestly. tailgate Joe is, is uh, top of the tops. He is somebody who I've done business with for a long time. Food's always A1. Drinks are always A1. His servers are always A1. DJ was A1. We had a blast. I mean, I can't sell it enough, and I don't need to sell it. Like, you guys and girls need to get out to WrestleMania here in Minnesota next year. Uh, and be a part of whatever we're going to do because it's going to be big. We got a lot to get into, guys. I know it's been one hell of a week. I am uh, honestly a little overwhelmed with the amount of news that we need to catch up on. Hopefully, we could get you all caught up today. We got, obviously, WrestleMania 40 fallout. We're going to talk about Stephanie McMahon returning to the company. Is she back? Is she not back? What were the reactions to her? The narrative all week was very thick. That Triple H is in charge. They wanted you to know that. And we're going to talk about the reaction to that right here on the podcast tonight. Can I get, can I get one thing off my chest yeah. real quick? Yeah. Um, I want to say this, whether you, you know, have your issues with anybody, 
um, in the world. Um, I know some of you think that I have issues with this next person, but I'm going to say this. Uh, my family is praying for Jesse's family. I hope his kid gets better, um, regardless of whether or not we like each other or whatnot. I never want anything to happen to anybody's family, especially their children. So I and my family are continuously praying for Jesse's son. Uh, absolutely. Jesse is uh, doing very well. His son's doing very well on the men there. Um, I'm not sure if he'll be with me on the show tomorrow. I think I'm flying solo, but uh, all is good coming out of Jesse's world there. So uh, continued thoughts and prayers hear. from my partner on Wednesday nights. Uh, we're going to get into that stuff. Damian Priest, we got news on him. He is the new world heavyweight champion. We will go over his new contract. He has signed a new WWE contract. We'll talk about Drew. He's expected to stay with the WWE as the rumor uh, is going this week. We'll talk about Sheamus. We'll talk about Seth Rollins. What did The Rock hand Cody Rhodes on Monday Night Raw last night? Drew and I will discuss. I have a, a very, very cool thought uh, that was brought to my attention last night on my Raw After Mania stream that I will present to you guys uh, and to Drew, so we'll see what happens there. Rock versus Cody Rhodes. Meltzer says reportedly his plan for WrestleMania 41. I don't know how true that is. We'll discuss that as well. That's not true. All right. And then uh, we will talk about Tony Khan. I had a, a mouthful to say about this in a seven-minute Twitter video that I posted from my car after I was done food shopping earlier because I saw the report that he was interviewed by Sports Illustrated and he gave the reason why he is doing what he's doing tomorrow night on Dynamite. So we will get into that. We got his explanation. We got the backstage feeling. Drew's going to give his opinion. I'm going to give my opinion. It's going to be a big night. And I want to thank you guys for joining us on episode 43 here. Follow us on social media, at JD from NY206, at Andrew Baydala on X. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Cameo. Hit the subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications and the super chats. Any comments, any questions, any concerns? Any thoughts on anything we discuss here tonight, Drew and I will hang out at the end and go over them all for you guys here on episode 43. So, as always, man, I'm going to leave it off with you. What do you want to talk about first? Well, I think we should talk about Monday Night Raw. I did okay. not catch your post show after Raw went off the air. My butt went to bed. I was exhausted, so I did not catch your post show. I do want to hear what you think the Rock handed Cody Rhodes. I also... Want to refute what Dave Meltzer said, although Dave is a, a good dude um, and gets good information at times. I do believe uh, Rock and Cody are penciled in for SummerSlam and Rock and Roman are penciled in for WrestleMania. But plans could change and Rock could easily take on Cody at WrestleMania 41 here in Minnesota and they could save the Rock and Roman stuff for WrestleMania 42 in Vegas. But. I know right now it looks like Rock and Cody are on a collision course for SummerSlam. Yeah, that would be that that would make the most sense, in my honest opinion. Um, with Monday Night Raw last night, I know the general feeling, and we're gonna get into Cody and Rock in that tremendous segment that opened the show. Uh, the overall feeling of Monday Night Raw last night, Drew, was a lot of people were kind of frustrated with the fact that they went commercial free and most of it was Cody and Rock. And we barely got any wrestling in that first, I would say, two hours of Raw after Mania. Did you find that to be a problem last night? Because I watched that show last night. Did it feel like Raw after Mania? Yes, uh, it did to me. The crowd was uh, excellent last night at the Wells Fargo Center. But I think everybody needs to sit down and just kind of calm down. Because last year, not sure if you guys remember, and I discussed this last night when I was live. Do you remember, remember what you got last year? What was the first thing that you saw after everything was Not over from a tremendous year. WrestleMania 39? Vince blew up the fucking script. He ripped it up, spit <clears> it out, <throat> and the first thing we saw was Omos versus Elias. What the fuck did that have to do with anything? And then right. people are complaining now about Cody and Rock and that tremendous segment, which basically set up the next year of WWE programming. Why were people so upset, Drew? I don't know. I think people just bitch to bitch. I think people are now making pie charts on how long women get wrestling time for, or there's actual wrestling on a wrestling show. And people just need to like literally just enjoy what's being put in front of you or don't change the channel. Anybody complaining about that 40 to 45 minute segment that had the rock Cody Rhodes and triple H and a very emotional video package in it. 
can go stack marbles on the freeway because there's no other company that could do that. There's no other company that could put the stars, the magnitude of those three men on their television product for even 15 minutes, let alone 45. And the company that everybody seems to want to compare WWE to had one of those stars and let him walk out the building. Okay. Not to say that Tony didn't offer him a contract, didn't try and keep him, but it seems like uh, AEW's attention was elsewhere and Cody decided to split. So if you didn't like what you saw in the first 40 minutes of WWE Monday Night Raw last night, I really don't know what to tell you other than you don't get it. No, they don't get it. And uh, was it a great show? No, it wasn't a great show. Did it do what it needed to do? Yes. And I mentioned this last night, Drew, too. A lot of people were like, well, why is JD so pro Triple H? Let me tell you something. I've been pro Triple H since the early days of NXT. If you're new around here, that's not my fucking problem. Okay? We got Triple H. Vince is out. I think we should all be celebrating the fact that this is the Renaissance era, the Triple H era, a new era. I think everybody should be very appreciative that we're getting what we're getting right now. And then Dude, we they did 3 million view. They did 3 million. They did a rating of 3 million. The Cody and Rock segment did 3 million. Television, not YouTube. Television. I, I I don't I don't know what people want. I mean, like I said, just compare it to last year's show and you're bitching after last year's mania. Let the guy fucking do what he's got to do. Plus we have a draft Coming up, literally, Vince never did the draft after WrestleMania. You know who's doing it after WrestleMania the way it should be done? Paul Levesque. Vince, if this was Vince, he'd be doing it in October, and we still get brand versus brand at Survivor Series, and nothing would make sense. I think now, you guys on. need to calm down. Um, hold on. Vin Vince did have drafts after WrestleMania, but it no. was a very long time ago. Well, very yeah, long time well, ago. I, well later, later in his regime, he, he started doing away with that. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, he started to lose his mind. Yeah. So Triple H has a draft coming up in three weeks. Why is he going to give you fresh, brand new stories when the rosters are not going to look the same that they look right now? So I think I everybody I, needs to calm yeah. down. I said that at the tailgate. Everyone looked at me like I was nuts, but I said, Cody's winning tonight. Okay, this was Sunday. And I said, Damian Priest is winning as well. He's cashing in. And Damian Priest is headed to SmackDown. And Cody is staying on Monday Night Raw. And the World yes. Heavyweight Championship will be on SmackDown, and the Universal Championship will be on Monday Night Raw. And to JD's point, the Raw after WrestleMania, you saw both NXT champions, both male and female, show up. You had, although don't get me wrong, a minute and 45 seconds of John Cena. It's still John fucking Cena, okay? And you also had a main event where CM Punk returned and cost Drew McIntyre again, furthering their feud. So, I mean, what do you, and we got Jey Uso's the number one contender for the championship. We got showcases we, for Ilya Dragunov and Roxanne Perez. Dragunov's yeah. getting called up in three weeks. Yeah. I mean, like, here's, the, you know, here's the deal. Jey Uso and Damian Priest for the World Heavyweight Championship, probably a backlash. You have Gable and Sami Zayn next week in Montreal, but that's going to bleed into France, I believe. You, I mean, there's a lot of things that WWE did last night that was fantastic. They furthered storylines. And they also didn't give you a ton to sink your teeth into because, to JD's point, we have a draft in three weeks. And I, I think you guys forget that we also have a Friday SmackDown after WrestleMania, and who knows yeah. who we're going to see over there. I'm sure we'll see Carmelo Hayes over there. We saw him a few times uh, earlier this year wrestling on SmackDown with Austin Theory. He was in the U.S. title tournament. So you guys just need to calm down. Uh, some someone in the chat said I bitched last year too. When am I not bitching? What, what I, I mean, clearly I bitched last year because Vince blew up the whole fucking show. Vince was in charge. Triple H was yeah, not. Yeah. So. Well, listen, that show last year was was awful. Besides one segment, and then the the one in Dallas, um, I was happy I left yeah. Monday morning because that one stunk too. The one in Tampa was okay, and I stayed for that. But man, I mean. The Raw after WrestleMania, the only one that I can remember that I was like, this is a good one. I want to say it was like the Raw after WrestleMania 34 when Roman came out and said, or it was a 33, 33 when he said, this is my yard now. And yeah. then the other rest of the show was pretty damn good. But I mean, realistically, like the Raw after WrestleMania has not hit. It has not hit. No, and uh, I think la I think last night was uh, a step in the right direction. It's not going to happen overnight. There's a lot to undo that Triple H needs to undo that Vince McMahon did. 
But I enjoyed the Rock and Cody segment. I think they have great chemistry. And there what was did a, he hand him? What did he hand him, JD? There, there was a lot to digest there, bro. I mean, how did you feel about? First of all, you 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 mentioned Roman saying this is my yard now after he beat the Undertaker on that Monday Night Raw. That's exactly the vibe that I got when Rock was in the ring last night. He told the crowd to shut the fuck up. Philadelphia was throwing it right back at him. I felt that vibe last night. So to see Rock get that, it definitely gave me a Raw after Mania feel. And Michael Cole even said so on commentary. Yeah, it's Raw after Mania. But yeah, after what happened last night. You know, Cody willingly handed The Rock the WWE Championship, allowing him to hold the title. I want to start there before we get into what Rock handed him. How did you feel about that? Because I had a problem with that. I know some people were saying that it was a throwback to what Cody did with The Rock several, several years before that. But Mm -hmm. Cody just won the championship from Roman. He beat the bloodline. The final boss was defeated. And... He just hands him the title to hold. Why did he do that? Because I felt like after all the struggle Cody went to to win this championship on Sunday night, he just has The Rock kind of just feel the title when it's taken so long to earn it. I think that was the point. I think, you know, I hate using wrestling terms on here like curtain or like heat or whatever else, but realistically what that does, just like that people's championship belt, it puts a ton of heat on The Rock. And The Rock... I mean, it was awkward. Don't get me wrong. Like the segment was awkward, um, because Cody being like, "Yeah, you can hold mine if I can hold yours." And was it designed? To be, was it designed to be awkward though? No, I don't think that was designed to be awkward. But I think it was designed to have the visual of the Rock holding that championship without Rock getting physical and beating Cody down, because then you got to pay that off almost immediately, right? Yeah. And the Rock's not going to do that. So what it does is it allows that picture to circulate on social media and everywhere else. And it also puts a ton of heat on rock being like, Hey, you, you didn't win that. You don't deserve just feels right. He said all that other stuff. It was designed to get a lot of heat, a lot of anger on the rock and it did its job. And it also, to your point, made Cody look like everything I worked for, for two years, I'm just going to hand over to you because you're the rock. Right. So I'm, I'll let you sure if I can hold the people's champion, because that also signaled and, and signified in my opinion, that Cody was also saying, like, that people's championship that you claim to be the people's champion, I'm the people's champion. So yeah. I, I dug the segment, and I think it, do, it it really did what it needed to do. Yeah, I mean, it set up what is going to happen when The Rock comes back. He will be back this year. The rumor is that he's going away for a little bit to film a movie. He'll be back right before SummerSlam, and WWE is going to need a mega main event for SummerSlam, which would be this, and I'll get into that story in a yeah. second. But before... They're making Rock look like an egomaniac. Yes. Like, they're not... And and Rock is, like, fully embracing that because part of that... Listen, I got... I have nothing but respect for Dwayne, DJ. But he... Anybody who's ever gotten to that level has a giant ego. They all have. Steve, Austin, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, then blah, 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 blah. We can go on and on and on. They are fully embracing that, and The Rock is playing into it like a champ. The People's Championship, him doing this, the final boss, the elaborate entrances, the slow walk, the vest, the pants, all this other stuff. If you don't understand what they're doing, then you don't get it. Yeah, Uh, and I feel like with that SummerSlam match potentially happening, I think that's the best route to go. I'm glad to see Rocky uh, continuing to embrace this heel persona that he's built upon in 2024. And I'm going to make a uh, very bold statement here. I think when this run is over for Heel Rock, I think with everything he's done so far, and I think everything that he's going to do when he gets back, leading to his match with Cody and then his match with Roman, if he's still heel, I think this version of The Rock, personally, is going to be my favorite version of The Rock Mm -hmm. that we've ever seen. 100%. Honestly. 100%. Yeah. And The Rock is going to be involved in the next three WrestleManias, 40, 41, and 42. Think about that. The long gamer, all that other stuff. Like, And he said it at the post-show press conference. I hate the fact that I used to come in, do a shot, one match, and split. And he's not doing that anymore. And I also want to make this very effing clear. For everybody that doubted me or J.D., and yeah, I know the chat will be lit up tomorrow. Or the comments will be lit up tomorrow. Drew always has to say when he's right. Yeah, because you guys come for our heads and you're wrong. And I will call you out when you're wrong. And I will be a man and say, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Remember when all of you sat back and said that this was the plan all along and how stupid you all look now? 
because The Rock told you himself at a press conference, and you'll see tomorrow on the YouTube show that WWE is dropping, that this was not the plan. The plan was for Rock and Roman since October, you goofs. I expect <laughs> full apologies, 100-word essays, on my Twitter feed, in the DMs tomorrow, because y'all look like a bunch of jabronis. This was always the plan. La, la, la. Who is it? Melter or somebody else said it was the plan. You want real news? You want real information? Stay here. Enough of this shit. Oh, it was never the plan. Yes, it was. This was not the plan. Cody, w and that tag match was never supposed to happen. I told you who Cody was supposed to face at the tailgate. It was Randall. I, 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 I don't believe people still think this tag team match was the original plan all along. No. No, it wasn't. Give me a break. Um, this hey, is story. Jesse, I already admitted that the W, the Warner Brothers Discovery deal fell through. We good? Yeah. I, I lick my wounds. I admitted when I was wrong. That doesn't mean that Warner Brothers Discovery wasn't talking to WWE. Warner Brothers Discovery also said at their uh, meetings a couple weeks ago, I think it was, I don't know, maybe three or four weeks ago, that they had very deep discussions with World Wrestling Entertainment. So, Listen, there's a story that flew underneath the radar. Four days before, uh, four days ago, uh, this was uh, WrestleMania weekend. Um, I don't know what he personally handed Cody at the end of this segment. He looked at Cody and said, one more thing, Cody, before I go, don't you ever go and break my heart ever again. He hands him something almost as if he's making a drug deal. And Cody's got this angry look on his face. He's like, his lip is quivering and he's angry and Rock walks away very cocky and as comfortable as he could be. Nobody knows. Now, initially I thought maybe he handed him something that is pertaining to Dusty. Maybe he handed him a Rolex. Maybe he handed him Dusty's Rolex that they found. I believe they found Dusty's old Rolex pawned. They got the original Rolex that he was wearing. Uh, Cody, I know, gifted Roman Rock and Seth matching Rolexes. I was thinking maybe he handed him back the Rolex that Cody gifted him. But then this came across my feed, Drew, on my stream last night. And there was a story that went around, flew right underneath everybody's nose. Cody Rhodes' tour bus caught fire before WrestleMania weekend. Cody tweeted out, before you hear it anywhere else, my mm -hmm. tour bus caught fire last night. This was on April 5th. Everybody yep. is safe and okay. The two items I grabbed before I got off will probably pop wrestling fans. He didn't say what. Again, thank you to the Philly Fire Department. We didn't see any fucking photos. We didn't hear anything but this tweet. I'm thinking, and what people in the chat were saying, maybe Rock handed him the lighter that made the bus go up in flames. No. I could tell you that unless this is the most elaborate work of all time. <laughs> I, I want to believe that, it, man, because it's too, it's too good to so be true. I heard this story, and I heard it, and I thought to myself, okay, I don't know if this is out. I'm not saying a word. I, this was a private conversation that two people were having. And I was just like, this This is just not something I'm going to talk about because yeah. I was privileged enough to be there when people were talking about it. And I'm not going to name who was there. I'm not going to name anything. And I thought to myself, man, that's crazy. And then this morning, I looked on social media. I was looking at Cody's tweets I wanted to see. And I was like, oh, shit, Cody put it out. So like, I could, I could talk to somebody now about it because yeah. I was like, I can't say anything. But I could tell you that this is 100% real. I believe it was the air conditioning unit caught fire and Cody was asleep and I, the bus driver woke him up. So, so what do you think rock handed Cody? If you had to make an I elaborate it, guess, I think it's Dusty's Rolex or I think it might've been the WrestleMania 40 Rolex that all four men were given. Yeah. Roman was wearing it at the hall of fame. Cody was wearing it on Ariel Hawani's show. I haven't seen Seth with it yet, but I'm assuming the rock has one too. Or I believe that Cody was handed uh, Dusty's Rolex. So. I, I, I that that was my first thought, my first thought in the situation. But I know uh, a Zippo lighter or something that could be pertaining to starting that fire. I mean, that would be too good to be true. Uh, that would really low key be fire for the storyline. But you know, I don't know if they really want to play into something that real life there. Uh, would The Rock go to those lengths? Does the character really want to go about to those murder. lengths? I know. We're talking about murder. Well, he is the here. final boss. I don't know. I mean, that's. I mean, he's going to jail for 15 to 20. 
I mean, I, that's, I don't know. that's heavy. That's heavy. Listen, I, I, I don't put anything past fucking rock now. Um, but uh, we will hopefully find out what that was that he handed him. And I hope that really does uh, play a factor into the storyline uh, that I do believe is leading to a match for them both at SummerSlam. Now, while speaking on the Observer Radio, Meltzer and Brian Alvarez talked about the segment where it was noted that the plan is to do Rock vs. Rhodes at WrestleMania 41. Alvarez says, I'm scrolling, and I'm scrolling through the timeline, and it's all everybody's talking about is where or what did The Rock give Cody? What do you think he gave him? That's what people love. There's a mystery. They love a mystery. And they have to follow the show every week to find out what is going on with this story. And this is going to be a long-term mystery because The Rock is leaving. But I thought it was very, very clever what they did because clearly they're going to be doing Rock and Cody one-on-one. And then Meltzer says, well, this is certainly the plan right now. Not for a long time. Not till next year's WrestleMania. Now, I know you, Drew, you've been very adamant that SummerSlam is the destination for these two do they do Rock Cody SummerSlam? And then if that is the case, Roman, I'm assuming, is going to return to be a part of this storyline to battle Cody Rhodes again. And then that's going to lead to Rock and Roman at WrestleMania 41 in Minneapolis. Or do they wait to do Rock Roman in Vegas? What, what is the Rock feeling? Do you think he would want to do them in Minneapolis or Las Vegas? Does he have a preference? Well, I, you know, I think that this world or the Universal Championship match could take place at SummerSlam and could Roman cost Cody the title and you have Rock as your champion for a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. I do know that the Rock, I believe from everything that, you know, we were told, DJ uh, and Nick Khan and some others wanted WrestleMania 41 in Las Vegas. And it just seems like maybe that's not going to happen. It's, it's, it's supposed to be signed, sealed, and delivered and locked here in Minnesota. I mean... Uh, they're just waiting on an announcement. So could they push it? Sure. But I do believe that Cody and Rock are ready to go for SummerSlam. And it would make the most sense. Um, you know, I think Roman, Seth, and some others are going to take a little time off because they really carried this company on their back for yeah. a while. And now the other thing is they really want to see what Cody is going to do, how he could be the workhorse, how he could be the draw that the fans wanted so bad. So they put the championship on him, which again was not the plan. It's not the plan. And now the plan is this. The fans wanted it. Rock, everybody else talked about it. Rock said at the press conference, he basically confirmed exactly what I said and others had said, a JD, I believe as well, that this was not the plan. And this is what they went with due to the fan backlash. And Rock said, you know, we could have just stuck to our guns, but we didn't. We listened, and that's the beautiful nature of this business. And I think, you know, here we could see just how big of a draw Cody is. This is what this litmus test is for Cody. How big are you going to be with that championship? All right, here's four months. Yeah, well, now we're here. And now Rock is uh, obviously going away. He'll be back eventually. But a lot of people, I've I've alluded alluded to it as well. I've uh, I've said, just like every other typical WWE babyface, that when we get what we want and the story is finished, you know WWE doesn't really handle the babyface champion very well. It's always that they handle the chase better than the reign. I hope that's not the case with Cody, and people are already anticipating the fans turning on Cody Rhodes. And I have to ask you, because there was a very, very ominous tweet that went out from one of my favorites in NXT, Dijak. He tweeted out on April 8th. He said, it won't be tomorrow. It won't be next week. It won't be next month. Might not even be next year. But one day you guys are going to turn so hard on Cody and boot his ass out of the building. And when that day comes, all I'm going to do is reference this post and tell you I was right. Are the fans going to turn on Cody if WWE doesn't book him the way a true babyface champion should be booked, not the WWE manufactured babyface champion, like a legit, like legit Cody. We love Cody. His storytelling is fantastic. We don't want to see a manufactured, watered down Cody Rhodes that's crying. And, you know, I don't know what they did with him on the road to WrestleMania. That's not the Cody I want to see. But mm -hmm. if we start feeling that and the WWE starts feeling that, is there a chance that comes SummerSlam? They do take the title off of him and put it on Rock. 
Or do they see the ratings slip and Cody's not the guy that's going to be bringing in the ratings like they have been getting? Do they take right. it off him and put him on the rock? Um, I mean, I think they're going to, you know, like I said, the litmus test is going to be for these next four months, et cetera, et cetera. I could tell you that I do believe that Cody's in for a very long run. I believe at least a year. Um, I would say up to WrestleMania 41, maybe the Royal Rumble, whatever. They're going to give him a long run. The four months are going to be very telling. The summer months, for the most part, with WWE are decent. Uh, right now, they're white hot. I mean, you literally... I went to WrestleMania Saturday, and I was like... I was texting to people, and then I went to guest services and all this other stuff, and I was like, hey, you know, like, I I, I want to move, like, you know, whatever. And they were like, Drew, we're, we're, this is a legit sellout. I was yeah. like, no way. And they were like, yeah, it's a legit sellout. And then I was looking at the manifest, and I was like, holy shit. So WWE is white hot. They're going to France. That's sold out. They're even doing Saudi Arabia where Friday Night SmackDown is in Saudi. And then they're doing the Queen and King of the Ring, I believe yes. it is. And they, I mean, they're that's Saudi. So it's paid, papered, all that other stuff. Good to go. I just, you know, Cody's going to have a, a, a good run for four months. I, it'll be interesting to see what they do. But I do believe that Cody is going to take on the likes of like Gunther, Styles, Orton, um, Seth. Uh, and I think The Rock. Uh, it's interesting. I don't know where Roman, I, when or where he comes back. I think that's going to be a big surprise, and I think they really want to see, WWE wants to see just how big WWE is without Roman Reigns for a little bit. So they want to really test this American Nightmare character. I think it's the right time to do it as well. I think we've uh, sure. all fatigued on Roman. Uh, not to take anything away from Roman. I praised Roman during this run. I praised Roman last night, the beginning stages of that Tribal Chief uh, storyline and that tribal chief angle was tremendous. He wore that gold glove. Everything he did in that early stage turned to gold. Uh, he was tremendous. Uh, it was just time. And, you know, to give Cody a chance, I think, was the right time. So we will certainly see what happens there. And I'm excited to see when Rock gets back because, you know, with WWE, they they took things to the, uh, the maximum with Rock there. I don't know how they're going to scale back without him on television. I hope that that edginess is still there. I hope that that I don't really give a shit. Attitude is still there that he brought back. I don't want WWE to go back on, you know, doing what they were doing before The Rock got there. So that's my main concern there. But, you know, I'm very much looking forward to see, seeing him get back to television. And the... Yeah, up and I mean... Yeah, again. Real quick, Cody sold over a million dollars worth of merch during WrestleMania weekend. So, I mean, that's the crazy. dude is 1,000% over. He's going to continue to be over. Again... You know, I think they're just going to see they're, they're hoping the numbers, the trajectory stays up and continues to stay up and it doesn't fall off a cliff uh, in the next four months. And that'll be the big tell. But, you know, you got guys like Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and now you have Becky Lynch taking some time off. And I do believe Roman won't be back until the summer. Um, I think Seth, you know, you're probably looking at two months, maybe maybe four to six weeks. And Becky, I think, will wait out her contract. Um, if she hasn't already re-signed. But those are three big draws, realistically. So now is your time, if you're looking at this roster, and if, if anybody on the roster is watching this, not that you need to hear this from me, but now is your time. Because two of the, the you know top men draws are gone. They're yeah. gone. Damian Priest is getting a massive opportunity to shine. And even Cody Rhodes, massive opportunity to continue to carry this ball. And it's time. It is. It, it is certainly time, and it's time for Damian Priest as well. Uh, I was actually quite surprised that they went ahead and did it. I was uh, dead set on McIntyre walking out of WrestleMania as the champion, but uh, here but we are. Drew hasn't signed. I know. I mean, he, everyone, everyone I know. wants to talk about that. They're not, and I said that to you at the tailgate. When, as soon as Drew, which I think will be very soon, puts pen to paper, we got a different story on our hands. We do. Uh, and that may be the story with Damian Priest because Damian Priest reportedly signed a new WWE contract. And this is in the news as of today. Following Monday's Raw, Priest spoke with WWE Digital and he actually confirmed the news himself. It wasn't even a Sapp or an Alvarez or Meltzer, Mike Johnson. The terms were obviously not disclosed, but he did say this has been already a great year for me. A new contract, new world title. New theme song, voiced by yours truly, Judgment Day is on fire. So he yeah. signed the new contract. They rewarded him with the WWE uh, World Heavyweight Championship. McIntyre did not, and the news on McIntyre is 
Uh, he's expected to stay, but has not signed on the dotted line yet. And Meltzer said today, I don't believe he's going anywhere. I know that when this thing became an issue was before he did this character. I think the main thing was he was concerned that he wasn't going to get a shot. Things happen. If Punk hadn't got hurt, who knows where he'd be on this show. Instead, because Punk got hurt, he's in the middle of the mix. So now he's happy. And then Meltzer says, remember when Punk showed up, he legitimately was not happy. He did walk out. I know people think that one was a work. And conveniently, with hindsight, they'll probably bring it up. But on that night, it was not a work, meaning Survivor Series. Seth was a work because Seth was going to be the one that Punk was going to work with at WrestleMania. So, again, tell of two cities here, Drew. McIntyre did not sign. If he did, he may end up the world champion. Uh, Damian Priest signed. He is the world champion. So, where do you see this going right now? Because the main priority is Punk and McIntyre. WWE is selling that. Whether it happens at Backlash, I don't think. Uh, possibly Clash of the Castle, yeah. the latest SummerSlam. A- and then Priest, he's the world champion right now. I don't know where he actually fits into the plans. Like you said, and I know that's a fact, Cody's staying on Raw with the WWE title. Priest is probably going to get drafted over to SmackDown. How does that affect Judgment Day? Do they move Judgment Day completely over to SmackDown? Do they move just Priest and break up the group without Priest? A lot's going on here, man. But again, tell yeah. of two cities. It depends. Realistically, I know Rhea, you know, you asked about Judgment Day. Rhea's in line for a very long run. Yes, and sure. There is no, yeah, there is no, she, I would, I'm going to tell you this right now. It's what, uh, April 9th? I don't think Rhea, I, and she's at 300 some odd days, right? Rhea is going to get the Roman Reigns treatment. Rhea, Rhea is going to be over a thousand days, in my opinion. Good. I don't, I don't, yeah, and she should. There's really nobody on this roster that could even hold her her bra. I mean, you know, people say jaw strap or whatever, but that's for a dude. There's nobody here who can hold her. There's no. nobody, absolutely nobody. And that's a testament to the work she's put in and everything else like that. And I think she gets to a thousand days. The Damian Priest thing, it really depends. If they want to flip the world to hold the championship for maybe three to four months, possibly. Uh, when Drew signs, you'll hear it from Drew. Drew's a good dude. He will 1,000% um, you know, put it out because that's the type of person he is. And I do believe CM Punk and Drew McIntyre could probably have a match at Money in the Bank, maybe. Uh, or maybe Punk costs Drew McIntyre the Money in the Bank, all that other stuff. I do believe Drew's time is coming. Uh, I believe Clash at the Castle would be the place to do it. Don't know who the world champion will be, but right now we got Jey Uso and we have uh, Damian Priest fighting for the World Heavyweight Championship. Probably a backlash. So, you know, that's where we're headed. And I know Jay's in for a big push as well. Don't know how that's going to go. Wish him the best. But, yeah, I Drew McIntyre had he had re-signed, uh, and that's re-signed, not resigned. Uh, I do believe that maybe we would have seen a different scenario at WrestleMania. Um, but the plan was never to have Seth Rollins walk out of WrestleMania with the championship. It was either going to see him Punk or somebody else, but Punk got hurt. So, yeah, uh, it's a very interesting situation and one that I find very exciting because there's a lot of moving parts here. You know, you mentioned Drew, you mentioned Priest, you mentioned Punk, you mentioned Rollins, what he's going to be doing when he gets back. I'm sure he's going to want another shot at that world championship. Jay Uso. We don't know what brand these these men will be on. Where's Gunther fitting into this? Because they took the IC title off of him at WrestleMania conveniently and they want to slot him fast into that main event scene. How quickly does he ascend the ranks? How quickly does he win the world championship? Is he going to be the recipient of the world championship? Not Rollins, not Drew, not Punk. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Plus, we got the King of the Ring coming up. He could very well win that. We don't know what the winner of that is going to receive. Again, a lot of moving parts, and that's what's exciting to me about this particular year's draft because the years prior... Triple H was basically not completely in charge, and it was always Vince, and it was always Vince's DNA. And I feel like with this draft, I really truly feel like the draft is going to be the start of the Paul Levesque era because it's going to be a clean slate. He's going to do what he wants. He's going to put who he wants where he wants, and it's going to basically wipe clean everything that Vince, everything that he had to inherit from Vince. That's why I'm so, so big on this year's draft. I don't know how they're going to change it. It's going to be changed as far as the model is concerned from years prior, but where everybody ends up, bro, and, and the, the titles and the feuds, I'm very excited to see what he does. Yeah, and that's the big thing here. Like, Triple H is really stamping his own 
era here in WWE. And that's, you know, you saw this with Endeavor and TKO. They are really scrubbing Vince McMahon and his ways out. Now, are they erasing Vince from history? No, they're not. They're because they can't. I mean, they really can't. They can't, they couldn't even do this with Chris Benoit, you know. So they're not going to do this with Vince. And obviously, that's the tale of two different monsters. But what I will say is that, you know, Vince was an intricate part of the 90s and even the 2000s of WWE. So they're not going to be able to do it. But what they are doing is erasing the business models and the, you know, ways of Vince McMahon. So that's key. Triple H is telling you all, okay, Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania is the start of the new season. We'll give this three weeks. We're going to have a draft and then backlash. The matches will be set. But realistically, you know, those people will have new homes after backlash. And that's brilliant. And it's the way it should be. And we need to have a hard brand split. I don't want this wild card bullshit. I don't want any of that stuff. Just keep it raw and SmackDown. Let the boys and girls cook, as the kids say, and let them have some fun. And give me stuff that I need to tune into either Mondays or Fridays for now. Because SmackDown, I think, is moving. But that's what they need to do. And I'm, you know, I was very pleased that the bloodline was pretty much only SmackDown based, Roman especially. And then you got to Mania season, all bets are off. But they need to continue the hard brand split. And I trust Triple H to do that. I'm yeah. thankful for his vision. Yeah, I, I totally agree with the uh, sticking to the brand split and keeping the brand separate if you are going to engage in a draft. And, and they really tried to hammer this home all weekend. I mean, they came out. Paul Heyman started off with the Hall of Fame saying that he was a Paul Levesque guy. And then Triple H came out, started the show off on Saturday saying this was a brand new era. Stephanie McMahon was very happy. She said this was the most important WrestleMania to her. She's been through all of them, uh, and this is because it's the start of the Paul Levesque era. Triple H came out on Monday saying that this is a new era. That's the thing. They're really pushing this new era, and there are details now about why WWE was so hard pushing this from Fightful. Uh, Last week, Fightful reported of the optimism that existed within WWE around the first WrestleMania with truly no influence from Vince McMahon. From August until mid-December 2022, there was briefly a period where, where McMahon stepped away but for a good portion of 2023, he was back contributing every week remotely. As Vince McMahon is gone, many of his standards and rules are now out the window. Now, this is something I really want your opinion on, bro, because this one uh, I don't really truly fully believe, but I hope it is the case. Ibu of Wrestling Purists, shout out to him, he does great work, said mm-hmm. after WrestleMania, spoke to someone from WWE who told me that the promotion is deliberately moving away from the terminology of sports entertainment. Now, Fightful and Sapp said they've heard familiar, though no specific edict has been handed down. However, one source said pro wrestling is no longer a dirty word within the WWE. There are a few dirty words, uh, but there aren't many anymore. And the dirty words that do exist... People just seem to say, even though we got memos telling us not to. And one of those dirty words is Vince McMahon, who is not to be referenced by name on any WWE programming or featured in archive footage, if at all possible. There is uh, rumors going around that there is a concentrated effort from within WWE to disassociate with him as best as possible. Uh, what, what What do you think about the terminology of sports entertainment going away? I don't fully believe... WWE or sports entertainment is going to go away from sports entertainment completely. I always think that there's going to be some semblance of sports entertainment, but what do you take on that? Or what is your take on that story from Fightful? Well, the story from Fightful is spot on. There's two things. Um, Yes, Vince McMahon is a dirty word. They also don't any promo packages that have Vince McMahon in them. uh, Scrub them out. 100% accurate. If you watch um, Triple H, Paul Levesque's voice is the new opening. There's no Vince McMahon at all. And Vince was a huge part of WWE slash F for a very long time. The sports entertainment line, yes, the WWE is embracing who they are, but they will never fully get rid of that sports entertainment moniker because it opens many, many doors for marketing and everything else like that. Pro wrestling now, because The Rock has stated it, Michael Cole stated it, Pat McAfee stated it, CM Punk stated it. Cody Rhodes stated, all the main guys, okay, that you want to hear this from, stated, pro wrestling is cool again. 
they jam that down your throat. So yes, they are allowed to say that and they are happy to embrace who the hell they are. They are a juggernaut right now in the pro wrestling landscape. And that was the reason why AEW, in my opinion, saw a lot of success because AEW was pro wrestling and WWE was sports entertainment. So now they're taking little pieces and they're like, okay, you want to be pro wrestling? We've always been pro wrestling. We're going to call ourselves pro wrestling now. Yeah, Michael Cole uh, basically put his stamp, or put WWE's stamp on it as he is the voice of the company. I love professional wrestling at the end of that main event with Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns at the end of night two. So that was uh, basically something that sent shockwaves out throughout the WWE for that weekend. They, that are, pro, from, they, they are pro wrestling. That came from Paul Levesque. And yeah. if you don't think that I'm going to, I'm going to say, this is my opinion. This is not fact. Okay. I think triple H Paul Levesque is, was extremely pissed about how many of his guys went over to AEW, And now this is his shots back. Yes. At all elite wrestling. You think you're pro wrestling show you pro wrestling. Not only that, I'm not even, I, I wasn't even thinking before you actually said that. Yes, I do believe that you are correct. I do think that this is basically a shot at his father-in-law too, more than anything. A hundred percent. I think Triple H, look, he won't say it publicly. He will never admit it publicly, but that man, he, that man was heartbroken. That man was fucking pushed aside. That man was cast off as a fucking nobody because yep. Bruce Pritchard and Vince McMahon and John Laurinaitis and everybody else fucking took what he created and they didn't like what he was doing because it wasn't them. They didn't come up with it. I truly feel that Triple H now, his revenge tour, never mind fucking Liv Morgan's revenge tour, this is Triple H's revenge tour, and he is doing these things, again, strategically. You know, we always say that WWE plays chess, not checkers. Triple H is playing chess and not checkers. He is yeah. saying these things because he is fucking angry for years. Now this is his place, and he's going to do things the way he has always wanted to do them without any outside interference from his father-in-law. I do think that it's mostly Vince, but yes, I do think that Triple H does blame AEW for a lot of what has happened to him as well. I, I could tell you this. The anger from Paul Levesque and Vince McMahon started when NXT was at the Barclays Center and other venues, and they had a hotter crowd, and they yeah. were selling more tickets than the Monday Night Raw after SummerSlam. Yeah. And Vince never understood it. And that, you're 100% spot on. This is Triple H showing Vince and everybody else, this is what we could have been for years, but you wanted to be fully in control and not listen to other people. And let me show you how daddy walks. Yeah, that's what this is. Uh, you talked about the Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest situation. The other big thing that happened that happened on WrestleMania weekend was Sami Zayn. He beat Gunther for the IC title. Legitimately, I, I don't remember the last time I was like shocked to see an outcome of a match. Uh, I was jaw dropped when I saw that outcome because I did not expect it. Uh, I didn't rule it out completely. I just didn't think that they would go through with it. And then we get Gable and Sami Zayn uh, next week in Montreal on Monday Night Raw for the IC title because as the story goes, Sami owes Gable a favor, and the favor is that IC title is giving him first shot at the title. So we're getting yeah. that in Montreal, but also, Drew, conveniently, again, WWE does these things uh, by design. We saw a video package last night for another return, and that man is Sheamus. Now, Sheamus is coming back to television, and he, and he mentioned, or it was mentioned in the video package, that the only title that he has not won is that Intercontinental Championship. He's coming back after the draft, supposedly from Fightful, that's the report, and he's going to be placed on a show, which right now we don't have any idea if it's going to be Raw or SmackDown, but how do you see him factoring into what Sami Zayn and Chad Gable are doing now after WrestleMania? First of all, I know you know a lot of your uh, fans and our fans didn't catch what I said at the tailgate, um, but I want to say that real quick. I hated what they did, and I don't use that word lightly. Um, I really did not, nothing against Sami Zayn. I hated the equity that Gunther built and then passed to Sami Zayn with the Intercontinental Championship. Sami Zayn didn't need that. He needs the World Heavyweight Championship. It's basically like they still don't trust Sami Zayn to hold the World Heavyweight Championship and, you know, do something with it and be uh, a strong champion. Sami Zayn has a lot of Mick Foley in him. Um, the match was fantastic, JD. There's no doubt about it. That Gunther-Sami Zayn match was unbelievable. 
But if they're using this as a vehicle to put the Intercontinental Championship on Sami Zayn, like I said at the tailgate, just to pass it to Gable, we didn't need this. We could have had Gunther go over at WrestleMania and then lose to Sam or to Chad Gable at Backlash or something else. I don't like this. I believe the Intercontinental Championship is going to Gable. I believe that they just didn't want Gable to beat Gunther, which is crazy. Um, and I think it's a shame because that equity would have been so much more well received and it would have had more longevity in my opinion if you just give it to Gable instead of Sami Zayn. Now I I agree with you but it's it's interesting that you say that you don't see them feeling uh that way about Chad Gable. You don't think that they believe Chad Gable should be beating someone like Gunther over a Sami Zayn. I look at it opposite. I mean just just from my point of view I would take a Chad Gable more so in a match against Gunther legitimately Me than, too. Than, than a Sami Zayn. I don't really understand that that me, that uh, that method to the man is there. Me too. I mean, Gable's yoked. Yeah, he can wrestle. Obviously, like duh. I to me, I it was just a miss. It really was. And I love Sami. Sami's a dog. But for me, again, the equity that Gunther built up to pass it to Gable would have been fantastic. I did not hate the match. The match was one of the best matches, if not the best match on that night. The problem with it was, is that all you had to do was have Gable cost Sami Zayn the championship, okay? Or throw in a towel because Sami was getting the shit kicked out of him. Gable could have ran down, threw in the towel, and they could have had a little bit of a feud. And then all of a sudden, you can have Gunther versus Gable at Backlash or even Money in the Bank. Again, for Sammy to hold this championship and then just pass it to Gable, which I believe is coming, I just don't like it. It was a waste. Does Gable waste. turn heel next week in Montreal on Sami Zayn? Because I, I, I don't see I don't see Sammy losing the title in Montreal. I just don't. No, me me either. But I think Gable gets so fed up that he can't win the big one or that he let his guard down that he beats the holy hell out of Sami Zayn and they have a rematch at Backlash and that's where Gable gets it. And for me... It's a damn mess. I prefer Gable as a heel anyway over a babyface. That's just me. Where does Sheamus fit into these IC title plans? Does he come back as a babyface or does he come back as a heel? Because just like Gable, I think Sheamus is a better heel than he is a babyface. 100%. Um, I don't know how long. Did Sheamus, has the news hit? Did Sheamus resign? I have no idea. Okay. Again, love Sheamus. Um, can work with anybody. I said I said last night he's one of the most versatile guys in the entire company. He can be plugged in any situation, world title, IC title, 100%. tag team title, and he'll just fucking kill it. A hundred percent. But I think he would be. I, I'm interested to see what Triple H and this regime does with him. But I think he'd be most benefit. You know, he'd be very beneficial to go over to all elite wrestling. So uh, I would. I would agree with that. With that. Uh, I would. I mean, him in the Blackpool Combat Club. Sign me up. Yeah. Right. So we'll see what happens there. Sap says that uh, Sheamus should be back after the draft. Now, we don't have any news on when his contract actually is up. I'm assuming with the time away, they're only going to add time on top of his existing deal. So he might not be up until the end of the year. We don't really know. So keep that uh, in mind as well. But uh, he will be back on television. And I've missed Sheamus. So it's going to be interesting to see how he factors. Because I know he's going to go after that IC title. Uh, speaking of titles, John Cena. John Cena plans to take a break from Hollywood, which I was surprised to read today. He wants one last run in WWE, and if this is it, the chase for 17 needs to be told. Against who? I don't know. But he was on the Pat McAfee show at uh, WWE World. It was the last day. And he says he hopes to have one more run next year once his Hollywood acting commitments are wrapped up after Christmas. He says this, and I quote, I was grateful enough that Honda kind of bumped a commitment that I had to be able to do, uh, that had uh, me able to do WrestleMania. So I'll go from here to do something with Honda. So I'm going straight to that. I have a cool keynote appearance with Samsung in Las Vegas. Their theme of the convention is the time is now. So they called on yours truly to speak there. I'm very grateful for that. I have some more branding stuff to do before I leave for Europe to finish a movie that we started filming before the strike called Heads of State. Uh, and he then goes straight from that to do Peacemaker Season 2. That'll take us through just about Christmas, and I'm crossing my fingers and toes and my heart that maybe I can tell Hollywood and the world of Hollywood to pump the brakes for a while so I can come back to my family for one last run. I don't know. I hope. I'm trying. We'll see what happens. So he wants it. I know he said, uh, I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm not going past 50 to be a pro wrestler. 
But if he comes back, uh, Drew, and we get John Cena for next year's WrestleMania season, I know a lot of us have discussed, you and I have discussed, potential for the chase for 17. Does he wrestle Cody? Does he wrestle Randy Orton? Does he wrestle Gunther for the world championship? Who do you see John Cena coming back and telling the best story possible for that chase for 17? Well, I know that Cody wants to have a match or a program with John Cena, so I think that's a no-brainer. I don't know if the championship will be on the line or Cody will be holding that championship or whatever at that case in point. Um, I think John could obviously chase 17 if that's something you know that everyone can agree with, but John's a big fan of like what works for the business, and yeah. that's great. Especially now, so I don't, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if John is going to just be like, I have to get to 17. I don't think that's something that John even like, you know, I don't know. I'd have to, you'd have to ask him, but I don't think that's something that's like, it has to get done. I don't think that's a necessity. So if it's me, I think John ends his career with Randy. I think it's at WrestleMania, but I do believe that John has programs with Cody. Um, I could see John having a program with Gunther for sure. Uh, and I could see John having maybe a program with Priest or uh, maybe even one more thing with Roman. Or The Rock or something to that extent. I mean, John can work a tag team, Cody and John versus Rock and Roman. They could do that. You know, that type of stuff. Uh, I, John, whenever he decides to come back, John Cena will obviously be welcome with open arms because everybody hated the man and now wished him back and all that other stuff, just like you guys do with, with you know, Roman. Roman will be back and don't wish him away because when he's gone, you'll want him back. Um, the chase for 17, I don't know if it happens, though. I really don't. So you don't have him win the world title. If it's, if I have the pencil, yeah, I do. Um, but I don't know if it's, we have to see where we are at that point. And I think J that's what John would say to anybody else yeah. too. Where are we, he, you know, come, let's just say John comes back in November and works November to WrestleMania that, that could give you time to do it and do it right. Where John can have a match at mania and drop the championship. Um, but again, you know, it's gotta be, if John can only come in January to April, no, I don't think John does that. I don't think John says I need the championship. It depends. You know, if WWE finds a way to make it work, then they'll make it work. Would I do it? Yes, I would. Yeah. You, uh, you mentioned that, uh, who knows where we will be next year. The landscape is already completely different. I'm sure it's going to be even more different when John Cena gets back after his Hollywood commitments. I remember when we were in Philly this past weekend and we were, on the way to the tailgate on Saturday, it was after NXT Stand and Deliver. Mm -hmm. I read an article to you, or I showed, showed you a video, that uh, two things happened that um, Stand and Deliver. I want to call it TakeOver. It's not TakeOver. Um, Julia signed with WWE. That's confirmed. Uh, she was at the show. She had a performer's uh, badge on all WrestleMania weekend. Uh, reportedly, William Regal was very intricate. Uh, or an integral part of her signing with the WWE. And then they announced a women's North American championship. So we have uh, a, a lot of things, a lot of things happening in uh, the world of WWE. It's changing. They're adding this title. Julia's coming on in, who is heralded as one of the best female wrestlers, if not the best female wrestlers in the world. Uh, I want to start with the North American championship because it's going to bleed into. Another major signing that is confirmed, but not really all confirmed yet. Um, what do you think of the North American Championship being added to the women's division? Because I did say that Saturday. I think it's a great idea because they did get rid of the tag team titles. Uh, the tag team titles were never needed in NXT for the women. I wish they'd do the same for the women on the main roster. That there, there is just no depth at all, and there will never be any depth. I love the fact that they are building their women's division and so highly invested in their women's division. A singles title, I believe, is needed. But the one thing I do hope that happens here is that the North American Championship for the women bleeds into a main roster singles title, secondary singles title, an intercontinental championship on the main roster for the women as they get rid of the tag team championships because I don't think they're needed. I, do, I, I think two singles championships on the main roster at NXT would benefit them so much better than tag team titles. What do you think? Um, I don't care about the women's North American championship. I think it's a waste. Um, I, to me, it's just, I don't care. Truthfully. I think the NXT world's women championship is perfect. They, that's all you need. The secondary championship for the women on the main roster, I think that could work if you really do scrap these tag team titles that the women are holding because then it frees up a lot of talent to do that. But again, 
I, I, I just, no, I don't care about the North American women's championship. I, I think at times, like we needed the two different championships for the women on raw and SmackDown and they needed their own titles. Like they, they desperately needed to, because they had so much talent at times. The women were doing uh, better numbers and outdrawing the men. Okay. And Bailey and, and Mercedes really carried the pandemic era for the women, along with Bianca Belair and, and others and Charlotte flair. But realistically, like I, I just, the, the women's North American championship is a mess. I, I just don't think NXT needs it. They don't. Yeah, I, uh, I I completely understand where you're coming from with that. I mean, that's um, I'm sure that is the sentiment of a lot of people. Honestly, you know, it's it's something that a lot yeah, of people we can't don't really say that understand. A, yeah, we can't say that AEW has too many championships, and then WWE just yeah. does the same thing, and then it's okay. I mean, listen, I'll call it like I see it. I don't need to be, you know, PC all the time here. I'm telling you, I don't. Like, I don't care about this North American Women's Championship. I wish the women the best of luck. But realistically, like, if you're going to sign a bunch of women, that's what you should do. But you should have plans for them to win the major championship at NXT. It's developmental. I mean, this is, that is what that brand is. It's developmental. It's no longer this alternate third brand. It's de it's developmental. So we don't need all these secondary championships in developmental. I want the two top people from that developmental to be brought up to Raw or SmackDown, and we saw that on Monday Night Raw. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel that same way, um, but they are invested in their women's division, so I know it was a big point of discussion coming out of WrestleMania weekend. I know they just announced the tournament tonight. Some people in the chat were saying they just announced the tournament, so we will see what happens with that. But uh, The signing's was, massive for them, by the way. For Julia, right? Julia is a massive signing for yeah. WWE, okay? Because WWE missed out on some other women talent that went to AEW. And WWE has the best women's division on the planet, bar none. Yeah. And Julia is a huge addition. I look forward to seeing what she does in the ring for WWE. But I, if y'all are excited about the NXT North American Women's Championship, good for y'all. I'm not. Speaking of uh, big signings, you know, a lot of people make fun of AEW for their signings, and then they don't generate ratings, and then they make fun of Triple H. That their side does, uh, AEW side, makes fun of Paul Levesque. Oh, you missed out on Mercedes and Will Ospreay and Okada and this and that. Meanwhile, he picked up Julia, and he uh, it's believed that he is picking up or has already signed Jacob Fatu, which out of everybody, Mercedes, Osprey, Okada, Julia, to me, the most exciting signing out of all of them is Jacob Fatu because not only am I most familiar with his work, I've called his matches in House of Glory. I know what that man is capable of. And if you don't know what Jacob Fatu is capable of, wait till you see what this guy could do for his size in that ring. So Fightful is reporting that Fatu has told others that he has signed with the promotion as of this past Wednesday, which leads to him being pulled from a scheduled GCW appearance on Saturday. Now, those in WWE couldn't confirm it, and those in NXT have not heard it, but several in GCW were discussing the rumors this weekend. This would be a big get for WWE, as Fatu is the cousin of the Usos, Solo Sokoa, and Roman Reigns of the Bloodline, a potential addition to the faction. Now, he's 31 years old. He's obviously got the Anawahi lineage. He trained on under his uncle Rikishi, and Jacob Fatu started wrestling in 2012. Fatu concluded his tenure with MLW at their Philadelphia tapings on February 3 and now appears to be WWE bound. So it will be interesting to see how he factors into things under the Triple H era. What do you think about this signing, man? Like I said, this is, the to me, the most exciting signing out of them all. Yeah, I mean, this has so many avenues that they could go down, right? Does he show up in NXT kind of like Solo did? But everyone's kind of anticipating this debut. So as soon as he shows up in NXT, that being Jacob Fatu, everyone's going to be like, okay, well, how long until he gets to the main roster to help out Roman? Do you just have him debut with Roman uh, or maybe, you know, something with a part of a new bloodline, et cetera, et cetera? There's so many different possibilities here, but this is a great signing for WWE I look forward to them making a couple more that are um, bloodline family tree related. I don't know why he family related. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that and we'll see where it goes. But um, again, I think the anticipation is huge here and that's what you need when you want to build 
uh, stars and you want to build productive storylines. Uh, I don't I don't know where he fits in, but I know Drew and I several weeks ago talked about a bloodline split. Rockets his own bloodline. Mm-hmm. Roman gets his own bloodline. It's going to be interesting when Roman comes back. When they when they debut Jacob Fatu, is he going picture to be this. a Hold heel on. or a picture this? Yeah, picture this. You you love this side of the business. You you like the booking side. Yep. You like the storyline side. Rock Roman Team Rock Team Roman War Games Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Team Rock versus Team Roman. Everybody and their mother is going to want to be there. It's crazy to even think about. I mean, is Jacob Fatu coming in to be a a, a fucking enforcer for? Uh, a heel rock, you know, what happens at SummerSlam? Like Drew said earlier in the show, maybe Roman costs rock the title against Cody. Maybe something happens there and we start the dissension between uh, the final boss and the tribal chief. Maybe rock hires Jacob Fatu to take out Roman. Maybe it's rock and Jacob Fatu. And then that leads to where does Jimmy side? Where does solo side? Where does Paul Heyman side? Where does Jay side? Where's Tamatonga going to fit into this? Apparently, he signed. You know, where where does Lance Anawaii fit into this? Apparently, there's a rumor that he may sign. I don't know. I'm excited about it, and that's where I want it to go, and that's why I was so heavy on Rock remaining heel and Rock yes. and Roman being together because that's, nope. that's the money. That's the story. Everybody's like, oh, Rock is going to, you know, turn on Roman and, and Roman and this and that. I'm like, no, no, what the fuck are you going to end it now for? That this, was my this next is, this point. Is the great, this is the great thing about this now, being that yeah. staying together. This is that was my next point. For all the morons who wanted Rock to turn on Roman, thank God it didn't happen. Because you want to know what? There was so much money on the table that those two guys and everybody in the back were not stupid enough to make that happen. Why would they do that at WrestleMania 40? You know how much time they have? If they start to show the cracks at SummerSlam. Let's just say Cody does beat The Rock because of Roman. And Roman says, hey, you if I can't get it done, you can't get it done. That type of stuff, whatever. Then we're there. We can get to Survivor Series. Then we have the major blow off at WrestleMania, the singles match that we all wanted to see. We get it at Minnesota. You know, that's where it is. That's the money. You don't rush the money. You want to keep pulling dollar bills, $20 bills, $100 bills out of that ATM until that ATM can't spit money anymore. That's what you want to do. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I did forget to ask you because I was I made a huge topic of discussion on it on Saturday night when I went live after the night one post. Uh, I watched Rock wrestle. Now, granted, it was a 45-minute match. It was slow to start. They paced themselves beautifully to a point where they do – get to the 45-minute mark. But when The Rock came out, entrance was on point. The atmosphere was fucking perfect. He gets in the ring. He gets in the ring for the first time. He's moving around. There was this this little feeling within me like, oh, man, he's going to get hurt. Something's going to happen. He's going to fucking tear something. Something's going to go terribly wrong. 45 minutes goes by, and this guy doesn't have a bead of sweat on his body. Now, granted, it was fucking 50 degrees in Philly and freezing cold, but... I don't been think hard for you to sweat. I, I don't think, Drew, it's gotten to a point where, and The Rock has been impressive all of his career, but mm-hmm. at this age, at this stage of his career, I don't think I expected to be that blown away by his performance, and I was, man. He wrestled the most perfect match that you could possibly ask of him, and if it's possible that we get a singles match out of it in this run with Cody and then maybe next year with Roman... And if he can keep that up, man, what this this run just based off that will be fucking legendary. Oh, and Rock's gonna do that. Yeah, you know, DJ, my homie, right? Because all <laughs> you morons. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, right. Because they never got they did. St- there were some people who still didn't understand the whole Waffle House thing because he had pancakes at a Waffle House. I mean, <laughs> they don't serve pancakes. Anyways, um, the Rock basically showed the entire roster. Without, you know, show like pulling his pants down and being like, I'm here, mother truckers. Rock said, I'll go 45 minutes. Let's do it. And I'll show you guys exactly how it is to work. I didn't come here just to get a massive payday and everything else like that. We're going to work tonight. And we're going to take the second longest main event in WrestleMania history. And we're going to work some magic. And that's what happened. Everybody left that building being like, wow, I can't wait for tomorrow night. And I, the buzz was it was, it was building and building and building. And then the match happened. And then I'm leaving Lincoln Financial Field. And everybody, not one person was like, that match was too long. 
Not one person to have Rock suck. Everybody left happy. The Rock worked a perfect match, and he worked 45 minutes to show everybody in the back, like, hey, I got this. And The Rock is going to work a singles match against Cody. Rock pinned Cody clean, okay? They alluded to all this and had a segment on Monday Night Raw the night after WrestleMania. Rock's working again, and he's working Cody in his singles. And Rock said, I'm not coming back just to have one shot and be done. I think after, like what we what you said, after this Rock run, we're all going to be thanking our stars that, he was involved. Yeah, he uh, he truly made, and WWE truly made the WrestleMania main event portion of 40 special. And I know how special, Drew, it was for you to get home to your son to watch that match on Sunday night. You know, and I know you were in the building Saturday. You just gave us a firsthand account of what the feeling was in the building there Saturday. And then you flew home mm-hmm. Sunday. I... I watched this Sunday and like, man, I felt like I was like five years old again watching uh, WrestleMania four in front yeah. of my, uh, my dad's big screen, fucking big box TV on satellite. And we're just enjoying the show and I'm feeling five years old again. And then we yeah. see, we see rock come out. We got the undertaker out there. Cena took care of solo undertaker took care of rock. Jay took care of Jimmy. It was truly the Avengers that, everybody had predict, uh, predicted was going to happen on Sunday night. What yeah. was the feeling in your household seeing all of this happen? And I said on Sunday and again on Monday, the memories that were made in that building Sunday night are going to last a lifetime. I know, you know, your son is of a young age and, you know, I, I go back to watching, you know, the earlier WrestleManias that I remember even now in his adult, that's going to live with him for the rest of his life. Yeah. Um, I said something to you privately. Um, that will remain private yep. about what I, you know, um, about that main event. And, you know, I said to you, you know, I, this is why I'm leaving. Yeah. Um, there was other reasons, but this is why I'm leaving. And for me, I remember being a kid watching WrestleMania 10, 12, and that moment. And my dad never really watched wrestling. Not at all. I mean, he took me to events, was a great father and still is a great father. But my dad and me never shared that moment of watching, you know, my guy win the championship. And I knew it was coming. And I, I when I woke up Sunday morning and, and like I said, had a, I told you privately what, what I had told and everything came to fruition. I knew that it was important for me to get home. Yeah. And I made it work because watching him see not only Cena and Taker, but watching him have that moment that he being Cody because he's such a Cody fan was important because moments like that last forever. And for him to look over and have his dad there with him, I thought was so important. I walked in the door. Nobody knew I was coming home. I walked in with my black hoodie, flipped my black hoodie off. And his face was just like, what are you doing here? Like the show's on. How are you not there? Because he knew that I, you know, I, you know, I was gifted tickets and all that other stuff or whatever else. And he was just like, what are you doing home? So it was, it was just very important for me. And my son went nuts. He still talks about it today. Um, He was so upset Saturday night. So they, they really did. WWE did some really smart business. I mean, my son called me Sunday morning was like, I can't believe the bloodline won. Like Cody's never going to win. I can't take this anymore. And then that moment happened. It was magic for him. And and hopefully that's a core memory. It'll be burned in his brain forever. I mean, it's going to be burned in uh, every, even adults. I mean, I, it's the way that, the way that things just played out between Saturday and Sunday, it w- was truly memorable to a point where I said it, it may go down as the greatest WrestleMania main event ever, not as far as work rate, but I mean, who the fuck, who the fuck is going to forget how everything just kind of played out one after the other on that Sunday night. It was just, JD, I had no, I had no idea where I was when I got home. Like, no idea. Um, Because, you know, Saturday night I was, and then I got up and I was running on three hours of sleep and I sat in that chair. And literally, I I, I had no idea, but I knew it was important to be there for him. And I, like, being as exhausted as I was, I remember, like, I could shut my eyes and I could see my son's reaction. I could see Cody and everything else like that. It was, it, it was very, very memorable. It brought me right back to my childhood when they put Brett on top of the roster's shoulders and Sean realizing his dream, it was very, very memorable. So for me, um, that was something that I think everybody, you know, you saw the reactions across the, the the universe on social media about people just losing their minds. I saw kids crying and all that other stuff. It's important to see what wrestling can do 
for not only kids, but adults and everything else like that. And those moments, if you have children, if you don't have children, your loved ones, whatever, make sure you are there for that those moments with those people because they're few and far in between. And that moment with Cody was one that will live in infamy forever. Now, as far as the adult in you, and I know mm -hmm. I talked about it uh, when we saw everything transpire on Sunday night, The Undertaker showed up to chokeslam The Rock, and I think everybody was anticipating some glass shattering and Stone Cold Steve Austin coming down. I don't want to sit here and put a damper on how incredible that main event was, but I would be lying to the 4,500 people in here if I, if I didn't tell you. I was not a little disappointed. I was I that was Cody I, just didn't do it by himself. No, no, no. Not not only that, that we got the Undertaker set of Stone Cold Steve Austin in that spot. Oh, yeah. I, well, I mean, how were you how were you feeling about that? Do you have any inside uh knowledge as to why it wasn't Stone Cold and why the Undertaker now? Before I let Drew answer that, a lot of people are like, Well, the Undertaker doesn't make sense. Undertaker absolutely makes sense. The Undertaker's been battling the Anawaii family for his entire fucking career. Yokozuna, yeah, well, Rikishi, The Rock. Yeah. I mean, he Roman. So he fits in that spot, but Stone Cold, yeah. I think, would have been just over the top. Just that, I think that building would be in fucking shambles if he if he came out. Well, that Austin and the and Rock like kind of face off would have been magic. Yeah, um, absolutely magic. I do believe, and to the Undertaker point, you're spot on. I mean, Roman beat the Undertaker at yeah. WrestleMania 33. Rome, uh, Rock, and Undertaker had some hellacious feuds, but I think. Steve Stone Cold Steve Austin is very big on okay, and where do we go from here? Like if so, I'm just coming in. I'm gonna stun Rock. I'm gonna split. I'm gonna go back home. And where do we go from here? Am I? Is there anything else we could do with this? Well, we don't know about that. All right. Well, nah. That's how I think it went down. Yep. I could be wrong. And Taker's there. It makes sense. It all fits. And he choke slams the Rock, and Taker's not working. No. And maybe they never had any plans for Steve to work. Stone Cold Steve Austin. So it was just easier to plug and play Taker in there instead of having to deal with, all right, well, listen, if we do this with Rock on Sunday, you know, can me and Rock work a tag? Can, you know, and and, and, and is there a program that we can, I can sink my teeth into? And I, I just, I think WWE was like, hey, Steve, we just have this for right now. And we'd love for you to be a part of it. Or maybe the conversation never happened. I yeah. don't know. But it was very easy to plug Taker in there. And it made sense. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, again, I was a little... I don't want to sound greedy, but I was uh, hoping the glass was shattering. But we got what we got. The uh, whole arena was, JD. I mean, You're not being greedy. Everybody, you know, when they, when well, I believe it was Wrestle Votes and other people, you know, put out tweets about how it wasn't done by mistake and got people, you know, excited and everything else like that. It, it was, it was a great moment. Um, it was needed. Um, would I have liked to have seen Stokehold Steve Austin? A hundred percent. But it was still cool to see Taker and and John and everybody else. It worked. It it definitely worked. Yeah, the other thing that worked before we get on to the uh, the real meat and potatoes of why uh, I titled the video the way that I did here tonight or the podcast the way that I did, uh, the one other thing I want to mention about this show is how brilliant Seth Rollins' inclusion in the match was because for weeks, Rollins told Cody that he would be his shield, and he legitimately came out and was Cody's shield. And I don't think many people picked up on it, but I, I, I mentioned it Sunday night when I was talking about it. That shield entrance and that shield uh, getup that Rollins was wearing came into effect so much that Roman basically took a chair to the back of Seth Rollins, who was already knocked out, instead of Cody Rhodes. He opted to bring back and drum up years of anger and revenge for what he feels about Seth Rollins to take him out one last time, and it actually ruined him from winning that match against Cody Rhodes after all that mayhem happened. So he was truly his shield, and I think a lot of people got lost in that little aspect of it, and I thought that was a, an absolutely brilliant aspect of the entire match. Yeah, um, and it, it was funny. Um, I had popped on social media after the event, and I, people were like, dude, when the shield music hit, I thought Mox would be Listen, man, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to bullshit, man. I, I'm like... Tell me Moxley's here, man. You know? Yeah, because yeah, Tony's going to be like, you're on the one. <laughs> I'm such a big wrestling fan. Go take one of my biggest signees and one of my former worlds. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but, I mean, it was just, you know, it was funny because they they played it up, man. They waited and waited and waited, and then Seth came out. It was great. Um, It was great. And Seth cried after he lost the championship to Drew and told Drew, you effing deserve it. Like, take care of that title. 
uh, Seth was full of emotion on Sunday, and it was great to see. And yes, the playback to the uh, smashing of the chair was awesome. I'm actually very happy that Seth did not turn on Cody. Yeah, yeah, I um, I, I just love the way everything turned out. I thought uh, every aspect of that match was brilliant. I'm going to remember it for years and years and years to come. It's something that we're going to go back and watch. Uh, I, f- I feel yearly because, you know, I do that same thing with Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 25. I do that same thing with Brett Austin, WrestleMania 13. You know, every SummerSlam, I go back and watch that Brett Undertaker match with Shawn Michaels as the special guest referee mm-hmm. at, 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 at the Nassau Coliseum. There are, there are moments where we go back and rewatch things. 1992 Royal Rumble is a yearly tradition for me every January. The 1993 Survivor Series and that showdown with Yokozuna and The Undertaker in that Foreign Fanatics and All Americans match. Things yeah. just sit with you. I think that is going to sit with us for a very long time. So, and to that point, JD, that's why I hopped on a flight, yeah. got home, and was with my son because I remember, the, to your point, the 96 Survivor Series at Madison Square Garden. I remember the 2000 Royal Rumble at Madison Square Garden. I remember the 97 SummerSlam, like you said, at the Continental Airlines Arena in New Jersey. I remember it all. Those were so, yeah. they, they were pivotal moments in my wrestling fandom that I eventually turned into something that was part of my business because it just stuck with you. And I knew that this moment had the potential to be very, very special. And I wanted him to see that, you know, when stuff like this is what bonds people and it really does. And it's good to see that wrestling is doing that again. Unbelievable weekend. I can't wait to do it all over again next year, depending on where they are, Minneapolis, Las Vegas, you know, let's do it up big. And uh, WWE had a tremendous WrestleMania 40. Hey, we could do it for Forbidden Door. We could do we could set something up for Forbidden Door, like a show or something. It's uh, going to be on Long Island, so stay tuned. Yeah, Forbidden Door is not going to be at the Arthur Ashe Stadium. That was reported today by Andrew Zarian on Fightful with his new po- with his new uh, podcast. Uh, we don't have an exact venue, but he did rule out Barclays. Uh, Madison Square Garden and the Nassau Coliseum. So uh, that and I just only, told you it's going to be on Long Island. So. Yeah, that's that only leaves one. Uh, is it the UBS Arena? I don't know. We'll get an official confirmation from AEW sooner rather than later. Yep. Speaking of AEW, we saved the most controversial and the best for last year. Before we get into your uh, questions, comments, and concerns, Tony Khan in the wee hours of Saturday night after WrestleMania night one. And during the post-show media scrum for WWE WrestleMania Night 1, AEW Collision aired. Now, supposedly they drew a higher rating than they did last week. Not really saying much of anything. It's still under 500,000. But on that show, there was a graphic. And the graphic read, and I was taken by surprise in the chat, because everybody at 3 o'clock in the morning was telling me, JD, did you see the Collision announcement? I'm like, no, nobody gives a fuck about AEW right now. The Young Bucks are going to unveil the footage from All In and the CM Punk confrontation with Jack Perry. Now, I'm going to read you in the order that I got the news, what happened first and where we sit now. So this is coming from Fightful. Fightful says AEW talent say they were told AEW is airing the All In footage. Now, clearly, the way that they titled that means when you hear something like that, Honestly, Drew, the way that I was thinking, I'm like, are they going to fucking give me fake Razor and fake Diesel here in this situation? That's Immediately, that's the first thing that I thought. I'm like, are we going to get a fucking troll job in this? The talent didn't even understand. The the talent didn't even know that we were getting a a real all-in fucking footage shown on Dynamite. What was your initial reaction to this? Uh, When I first, like you said, I think I said this at the tailgate. When I first heard it, I was like, okay, um... I mean, people were texting me and we were uh, sitting at a bar and I was just like, what? what? What are we doing here? But I was like, okay, whatever, like, whatever. I thought it would be a skit. Like, that's what I thought. I thought we'd have, you know, like the buck show up to a locker room and, you know, uh, an old man with some tattoos, you know, with a cane is walking in and it's, you know, supposed to be CM Punk and they super kick him. And, you know, um, they put him on a, a, a taxi at the, that's, you know, London-esque out of the building or whatever else. And they even had maybe like a Perry Perry because CM Punk brought that up. Um, Nando's, um, you know, box by him or something. I don't know. Something like that. But then we got the Sports Illustrated stuff, which you can get into. 
Yeah, so Fightful says many in the company thought this was some sort of troll or bait, but everyone around the situation that they've spoke to at least claims that it is genuine and footage from the CM Punk Jack Perry altercation is expected to air. Specifically, it was reiterated to us by numerous people in AEW that the company isn't going to falsely promote something much less like that. The talent and staff that immediately inquired were told that the plan is legitimately to air the footage. Now, regarding the questions of legalities, that doesn't appear to be an issue. It was worth noting that the Young Bucks are involved in the tag team tournament with FTR, and that is still active, and the latter of whom are publicly close with CM Punk. When we asked talent and staff on the roster how they thought this would work out, one veteran said, I'd be surprised if FTR weren't given a heads up. I can't say for certain they were, but if I know Tony the way that I think I do, they would have have at least given a fair warning to FTR that it was coming because he respects them a lot. Those in AEW we've spoken to say that they are of the belief that the video was enough for the company to make a clean split without much of a legal issue or a legal battle. The footage hasn't been made available internally to anyone we've spoken to. Now, Tony Khan is doing this because apparently he's very upset with the CM Punk interview with Ariel Hawani, and he's wanted to air this all-in footage for a while. Now, he wanted to air it for a while. I don't know why he didn't do it to give this FTR Young Bucks upcoming tag team match a little bit more heat instead of saving it for two weeks before the fucking pay-per-view where it will have no heat no matter if he airs the footage or not. I'll stop there. He's upset with the interview, Drew. A lot of people that I heard from feel like the interview was staged with Ariel Hawani. A lot of people tend to think Ooh, that... If, a, a what lot, a what lot, interview? The Ariel Hawani CM Punk interview. That it was okay. set up. It was set up by Paul Levesque. Cause, yeah, because Paul Levesque knew exactly what, what CM Punk was going to say. Go ahead, continue. A lot of people think it was staged. A lot of people think it was a setup. A lot of people think it was overly scripted. These are the things that I heard. Um, a lot of people blame CM Punk for opening up this door. And my rebuttal to that is Ariel Hawani, no matter what you think of him, he's obviously close to Nick Khan. Tony Khan doesn't have a liking to him. But... I think that Ariel Hawani asked these questions. CM Punk didn't have to answer these questions. He, he could have said, listen, I don't want to talk about that. It's WrestleMania weekend. Let's move on with what's important. That's in my past. I'm happy. He could have absolutely did that. But I don't know what people are expecting out of CM Punk. This is the CM Punk that we wanted. This is the CM Punk that we all fell in love with. So if he didn't answer these questions, then it would have been the CM Punk, you know, of, of, of like, who the fuck is this guy? But, but, he, but he did everything that we wanted him to. He answered these questions. Yeah, people have a problem with him answering these questions honestly. Now, I understand it's one side of the story, but Tony Khan is upset with CM Punk's side of the story here, and I don't really understand why there is a necessity to go out there and prove CM Punk is wrong in this particular instance. I'll stop there, Drew. What, what do you think about everything that's led up to this interview with the interview uh, with, with Tony Khan being upset with what he said? First of all, Ariel Hawani did his job and yeah. he got answers to questions that everybody wanted but had no idea if Phil Brooks, CM Punk, was going to answer them, and he did. So being staged is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Punk knew walking onto that set that these questions were going to be asked, and I'm sure that he informed both Nick Khan and Paul Levesque Triple H, like, you know he's going to ask this stuff? Are you cool with me answering? Yeah, go be you. That I could see that conversation happening, sure. But to sit back and be like, "Yeah, this is what we're going to say. We're going to we're going to we're going to give the other promotion some light on WrestleMania." We're like, what are you nuts? Like that's no. Um, if I'm Tony Khan, and I know he doesn't want to do this because he doesn't like Ariel, I'd have called Ariel while while Punk was on the air, and I would have been like, "Hey, Phil, is this really what happened?" Or should I air the footage next week on Dynamite? Do you want to tell the truth? Or do you want to keep complaining? And and I'm sure Ariel wouldn't have answered the phone because he's live in an interview. But maybe, you know, Tony, also, if it was me, I would have called Ariel the next day and been like, you want to know what? I don't like you. I think you're a real piece of shit. But I'll jump on your show and clear this air because Punk's, Punk's full of shit. If that's what we're getting, if that's what this is, if this video is to make CM Punk look like a liar. He's a liar. Great. 
C- congratulations, but you can't make money off CM Punk anymore. And you think by doing this, Tony, that this is going to bury CM Punk? Because it's not. That's my biggest issue with this whole thing. If they use this, which I think they will, I'm going to let it play out. I think this is to further the FTR Buck stuff. Great. I hear the footage. Who cares? Well, it depends on what's on it, truthfully. And everyone's going to watch it. It's a ratings ploy. Don't get me wrong. But I think there's a way to make this something good that brings heat to this tag match. But I will say, you know, if I'm Tony, I would have literally, I would have gone on the air or somewhere else and been like, CM Punk's full of shit, if he is. And I think that's what they're doing here, and I think it's a miss. Fightful Select, Dave Meltzer, Brian Alvarez, all reported that AEW will indeed be airing the footage. So this apparently is legit. Fightful noted that the footage of the altercation is expected to air, and those in AEW noted the promotion wouldn't falsely be promoting something. Alvarez and Meltzer addressed it on Wrestling Observer. Alvarez says this, It is true that on Dynamite, Tony Khan is airing the Jack Perry CM Punk footage from All In. It is not bait and switch. When I first saw the graphic saying Young Bucks went to show the footage from All In, or we're going to show the footage from All In, I immediately thought, Okay, well, you know, the Young Bucks are heel characters. It's going to be some goofy thing or whatever. But then I asked, and I'm not talking like one person, multiple people. Melcher says, I can definitely say that it's 100% confirmed. It's 100% that they're airing the footage. Tony was very upset about the CM Punk interview with Ariel Hawani. And apparently, I was told that he wanted to air this footage a long time ago. And for whatever reason, he did not. And now... Stop right there. Hold on. Stop there. Stop. Tony... If what I would have done, because this we would have never been talking about this, as I would have played this footage to the Chicago crowd at All Out. That's it. That's all you needed to do. That was what eight months ago. We could have done well, that's with this. A, that's, shit. A, that's a good point. If CM Punk was supposedly fired with cause, mm-hmm. what was with cause in that aspect? If you really wanted to prove everybody wrong here. About Paul Punk didn't do that, and you wanted to fucking get on the right side of things as far as you're concerned. Why didn't you air it? If he was fired with cause, he clearly did something wrong. So why didn't you show why he got fired? But, you know, Tony Khan does the same fucking thing every time. He's so secretive about everything, and I don't really understand because apparently there were no NDA signed with this. Yeah, and and again, here's the deal. I would have walked out to that Chicago crowd that I knew I was going to get crucified at because I just fired their hero. But realistically, guys... We're going to put on a great show. I want to show you what transpired at All In and the reason for Phil Brooks CM Punk's termination. Here we go. And then maybe, you know, you don't have this stuff. Again, I I would have let this die. Like when Punk went on Ariel Hawani's stuff and let it die. I mean, you know, Tony seems to be angry by it. So I would have, if if, if it really bothered me, then I would have refuted it and gone to extreme lengths to refute it. I'll come on your show. I'll, I'll, you can have an exclusive, blah, 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 blah. It seems like what they're doing is, while well, we'll have our own exclusive and it'll capture ratings. I'm not going to give some to Ariel Hawani. I get the business side of it. But again, I don't give air to this. Like, I don't let it breathe anymore. CM Punk brought it back to life during WrestleMania weekend. People were talking about AEW during WrestleMania weekend. What a mistake. And now we have this, where if it's not used as a proper vehicle to put real gasoline on a feud, we got a problem. Because you can't make money off Phil Brooks anymore. It's done. There's no payoff. The only payoff is the Bucks and FTR. And the main culprit in this whole video is CM Punk and or Jack Perry. And nobody gives a shit about Jack Perry. No. So this ain't helping him either. Now, uh, they, they continue on to say, and now I guess of the timing, because of the timing and the interview and what CM Punk said with Ariel Hawani, he's going to air it. And we've heard many, many times, many sides of the story about what happened. We're going to see Wednesday, but I think it's safe to say that if this is the story that CM Punk told, I don't know why Tony would air the footage. Now, Tony Khan was interviewed by Sports Illustrated, and this is what got me in my Twitter rant today. He explained why CM Punk and the Jack Perry footage will air on Dynamite. He says this with Sports Illustrated and the reason why he decided to air it. AEW is a great track record on delivering what we advertised, and it is real footage. Tony Khan stated, you know, he remained guarded over the specific content that will air from All In. The Young Bucks will show backstage footage from All In, the most important event in AEW history. The world record holder for the most tickets sold for any wrestling record. Yeah, I know, 81,000. And it was an important night backstage as well. 
The decision is based on putting on the best show for AEW, as well as driving interest for Dynamite and our Dynasty pay-per-view on April 21st. This is real-life footage that affected many people, and it will air for the first time on TBS during Dynamite. And then he brought up the Young Bucks and how they're slated to wrestle FTR for the vacant tag team titles at Dynasty. There is a good reason why the Young Bucks are showing this video. He says that it's important that the Young Bucks explain the reason why this is relevant going into the match. Yeah. I, uh, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't understand what FTR has to do with this. Well, what does, FTR, what does, CM Punk. Boys. I don't. Yeah, I, that's great, but they weren't. They weren't involved in the altercation. We don't know that. That's the thing. I'm gonna let the footage speak for itself. I hope this furthers the storyline. But if this is just to show that CM Punk put Jack Perry in a headlock and then yelled at Tony Khan, or you know, it was uh, who gives a shit. What does that do? You really think that unless CM, I'm going to tell you this right now, unless the footage has CM Punk laying in a puddle of blood, getting knocked out or getting beat down, it does nothing for all elite wrestling, nothing. And even then it's like, all right, you made Punk look like a liar, which I doubt is going to happen. I doubt that's what's going to happen. I doubt CM Punk is laid out or got his ass kicked or anything else like that. So for people to be like, oh, you know, Tony's Tony was going to let this die. And then Punk burn, get, what? No, you can't make money off punk anymore. It's dead. So this better revolve around people who are currently on your roster that you can make money off of. Because if it doesn't, and your this whole thing was to show how punk choked out Perry, Jack is fine, and then punk yelled at Tony. That's the dumbest shit they could have done. Dumb. CM Punk is not named in the graphic. He's not named on the clip or whatever they're doing. I, I, I think all of us understand that CM Punk was a part of this Jack Perry brawl at All In. And a lot of the joke is CM Punk versus Jack Perry is the biggest match that's happening on Dynamite on Wednesday. CM Punk is still the biggest draw in AEW, and he's not working there. I get all the jokes. I get all the... AEW fans backing up Tony Khan saying, well, WWE didn't have to drop, you know, AEW references all WrestleMania weekend. They didn't have to take the cheap shots. Triple H didn't have to take the cheap shots. Pat McAfee didn't have to take the cheap shots. Punk didn't have to take the cheap shots. I get it. I understand it. They didn't have to do that, but they did. But the best thing for Tony Khan to do here, in my honest opinion, is ignore the noise. AEW had the best month of March in the history of their company. And you are taking several steps backwards by doing this. And it's not going to benefit anybody. I don't know how many times I need to explain this to all the fucking dumb airheads on social media. Well, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to just take the cheap shots and not get some sort of revenge? Yeah, that's exactly what I want them to do. Because we had to sit through fucking 10 minutes of cringe last week with Adam Copeland doing some bullshit rah-rah speech. You wasted 10 minutes there. Dax went on the microphone after collision, which was taped, which we saw Saturday, to give another rah-rah speech. And now you're wasting more television time for CM Punk on this Wednesday's Dynamite going into a pay-per-view that you have in two weeks. You know what my problem is, Drew, about this? The match, like you said, can't book it. It's the biggest match that they did. They fucked it up. The Bucks fucked it up. They didn't want to work with them, and you're still making this an issue. But where my problem stems is AEW is so fucking transparent with their Adam Copeland promo, and they're so desperate that they want a pop for a rating with this stunt that they're pulling on Wednesday. And it's because Mercedes hasn't drawn, Will Ospreay hasn't drawn, and Okada hasn't drawn. And if they put that much effort into actually writing some compelling stories that takes them week to week, that makes us want to watch the show more and more week by week, that's where their energy should go. But they're wasting all this energy on the negativity after Adam Copeland said last week, there's so much negativity, let's talk about the positivity. And Tony Khan goes right back to doing the fucking negativity this week. Well, we don't. Again, we don't know that yet. I'm hoping everything you said is spot on if they actually air something that involves Phil Brooks, CM Punk, because that would be the biggest detriment to AEW that you could possibly have. Because I will tell you this, nobody lives in this bald head rent-free and nobody should live in any of your heads rent-free because there is no such thing as free rent. So if 
Tony is really going to show CM Punk and the footage from All In. Man, what a miss. But I'm going to watch tomorrow and pray that this is something that furthers a storyline between FTR and the Bucks. Because if it doesn't, like I said, this is one of the biggest misses in history because you cannot generate revenue off CM Punk. And if they pop a massive rating and it is because of CM Punk and this footage and Punk's on it, you basically just stamped that without him, you can't get a million views. I don't that's, do it. That's that's what it is. And what happens when it pops a rating? You want to build dynamite up. You want to bring some interest to dynamite. You want to bring some interest to dynasty. If this brings interest to dynamite, how many of those people are tuning in tomorrow night? How many of those people are going to be back the following Wednesday? How many? You're going to go right. right back to where you are right now in the sub 800,000 on dynamite. What about the pay per view? How are you building towards the pay per view? And don't tell me that it's about FTR and the Young Bucks. Like Drew says, he doesn't give a shit about Jack Perry. I don't give a shit about the Young Bucks and FTR. The tournament's predictable. It plays into the Young Bucks' character to win the fucking tag team titles. How does that add any interest to what they're doing? We've seen it three times already with no heat, and you're trying to manufacture heat two weeks before the pay-per-view coming out of a fucking tournament based on CM Punk, not FTR, and the Young Bucks. I don't really get it. I again I think that they would not they would not promote this they would not air this they would not do all this other stuff without knowing in the back of their head that if they do go a certain route that Copeland and Dax both look like goofballs and I don't think they're willing to do that because I think Copeland would sit down with Tony and be like we can't do this if this is what you're doing because it's going to make your roster and everybody else look like a bunch of jackasses so let's not I do believe that we are not getting what everybody thinks we're getting tomorrow night do i think there's going to be real footage sure but do i you know real glad you know you, you know you know for all the people for all the people that that are saying well where's this energy when cm punk and triple h were talking about aew on the pat mcafee show mm-hmm. and this and that let me tell you fucking retards everything you need to know right now because now you got me fucking fired up you got me fired up i don't understand why people are talking about this because punk Never used AEW in context to tell a story on television, ever. WWE would never waste precious television time on this bullshit on Raw yeah. or on SmackDown. Yet here Tony Khan is, two weeks before a pay-per-view, selling this bullshit to us on Dynamite. What if the rest of the roster is looking at this? Where's Samoa Joe? Where's Swerve? Where's Will Ospreay? Where's Brian yeah. Danielson? Where's Mercedes? Where's that women's locker room where you're no, putting you put so much concentrated effort into building this women's division? Do you realize that Swerve Strickland is going to become the first black African-American world heavyweight champion in this company? And this is superseding a moment like that because of petty online troll-like behavior from a fucking CEO who calls himself a boss who's acting like a fucking bitch that you usually see on Reddit. That's what's happening. That's my fucking problem. Where's the fucking energy for Swerve? Where's the energy for him? Where's his moment? No, it's it's about fuck. Let's sell CM Punk. Let's uh, sell the fucking box, the box and Jack Berry. Give me a fucking break, man. I mean, listen, I think you could have stopped that rant when you first, and it was a good one, you could have said right then and there, and your point, you hit it with an exclamation point and you stamped it. When you said, Paul Triple H Levesque and CM Punk did not waste television time talking about the other company or even trying to blend it into storylines. They're both on separate podcasts that had nothing to do with what was going on during WrestleMania week regarding storylines. You were spot on. Spot on. They are not wasting their airtime talking about another promotion. That's... I mean, you're basically, think about going to get married and you're giving a speech and you're talking about your ex. You don't do that. You don't do it. I mean, you don't do it. So, I mean, your rant was spot on. I just, I have a funny feeling that they're not going to show anything that involves punk. I think this all revolves around FTR and the Bucks, but you're right. I don't know who made the comment about like, give me the same energy or whatever. Like they didn't waste airtime talking about this garbage. They went on a podcast. They went on Pat McAfee's show. They didn't sit on Monday Night Raw or WrestleMania and be like, you know, AEW, like they're a bunch of bitches and on Tony Khan suck. They didn't do that. They didn't do it. They went on a podcast and talked about it because realistically, 
you saw the whole weekend. They truly believe that they don't have an equal. And they don't right now. That's it. How many people were driven away from this company when CM Punk was fired? You know how many people come to me and A tell lot. me? You know how many some people come to me and tell me, you know, JD, I didn't watch AEW, but I watched AEW when Punk was there. Now you're going to open up old wounds and continue to address the situation, whether it's real or a troll? I don't, I don't understand the mentality behind that. Where's the concentrated effort to write long-term stories? I don't give a shit about this story with FTR and the Young Bucks if that's the case. I've praised the Young Bucks and Okada story. I like where it's going. Me and Jesse have pitched Jack Perry joining the Elite for weeks now. That's great. But like Drew said, if this is a concentrated effort to tell a story for between FDR and the Young Bucks and a concentrated effort to bring Jack Perry back to television, Jack Perry was considered a pillar back in year one. Year one. Now he's no longer considered a pillar. He wasn't a pillar then. He's not a pillar now. And when he gets back to television, is Jack Perry going to bring in viewers? Jack Perry is a scapegoat for a reason. They'll always have his name synonymous with fucking punk leaving the company. Nobody gives a fuck about Jack Perry. And if you think yeah. Jack Perry coming back to television is going to add any interest and it's going to be built around Jack Perry, you're going to lose more people because nobody gives a fuck about Jack Perry. Yeah. You're wasting your time with this. Like uh, anybody who is sitting back being like, you know, this is what TK should do. He should show CM Punk on AEW Dynamite. You you don't get it and you never will. And that's okay. And that's okay. But you never will get it. You don't give airtime to somebody who is no longer on your roster. You can make money. He's not, it's not like he's a free agent. He's with the competition, quote unquote. You just don't do it. And I don't believe they will. I think Tony has better business sense than this to, and he, the people surrounding him, though, you know, that's, that's the key. If we see CM Punk and Jack Perry on the footage and it's circulating and, and, and all encompassing around CM Punk on Wednesday. We got a big problem on our hands. I also hate, and I have an immense amount of respect for Dustin Rhodes, but I hate that AW is like, well, let's capitalize glad, on the I'm Rhodes last brought, name. I'm glad you brought that up, man. My God, what the Dustin, fuck is he doing? Dustin is a, 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 a beautiful human being, and I respect everything he has done, and the man is a gem. And I thank him for for all all the niceness that he has ever shown me. But I this just is I don't I just don't like it. Like Cody just won the world championship, and the Rhodes name is through the roof. So let's do this. Let's put Joe and 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 Dustin in the middle of the ring. Like no, just will you be different for once, please? You forget what got everybody on board at times, and that's because you were the alternative. You were different. You were different. Be different. Stop trying to blend in and stand the fuck out. I don't understand why they didn't take a step back this weekend. Nobody gives a shit about AEW this weekend, this past weekend. Yet you made it all about yourself and you're fucking doing things that you shouldn't be doing to, 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 to blatantly fucking try to reach, desperately reach for ratings on the biggest wrestling weekend of the year. I, I don't, I don't, now, now you're playing into Cody's title win with his brother getting an eliminator match against Samoa Joe? I mean, wh what is this place? Why? Yeah, yeah. I don't, like, you know, I, the Rhodes name is at an all-time high. Let's throw Dustin in a tag team champ or a, a world championship match. Like, what? What? If that, doesn't tell, if that doesn't tell you AEW and, and their creative team, I don't, even, I don't even think it's a fucking team at this point. If that doesn't tell you how, how void... Of, of originality they have. I don't know what else to tell you. Look at that show Wednesday. Like, yeah. th this was a completely different story in the first week, the second week, third week of March. What the fuck am I looking at here? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing on that card is, like, first of all, I'm very excited for Copeland and, um, uh, who is it, Pentel Zero. Love that. That's going to be a great match. But I just, you know, the biggest thing that everyone's talking about is the footage and then the Joe Dustin Rhodes match. Like, I, I'm sorry, but no. Like, so just, Dustin's going to be completely beat down because they're not putting the championship on Dustin. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't, like, let's capitalize off the Rose name because we have one. Cool. Like, I mean, I just... To me, I just Jesse, that, Jesse, do, do me a favor, please, man. Stop starting shit in the chat. I didn't call you an R word. No. I didn't call you a retard. Stop. This is look, right. go look at look, go look at my video on Twitter, man. It fucking it went viral. 
300 yeah, fucking thousand, 300, 3,000 likes. I, I, I mean, I, I, I heard comments all fucking night about yeah. this thing. You know, let's let's get this back on track. I mean, yeah. again, I you know, it is it is what it is. I just think AEW needs to go back to being that unique challenger brand. And I think that they are losing their identity quick. Um, and I, you know, I put out a tweet a long time ago that or it was a long time. Ago, it was about a month ago. I said that uh, Copeland and Christian outdrew Mercedes on YouTube. That's a problem. That's a problem. That is Especially a problem. When especially when Mercedes, you know, was supposed to come in and change the game, and I'm going to give her a little bit more time, but man, I, I that she will change the women's division. She she's a bright star, but when people aren't watching her on YouTube, it's a problem. Like I, we I'll check right now. I'm going to tell you this right now. I mean, I, you know, AEW with with Mercedes was not. I mean, Copeland and Christian outdrew her in less than a week. One point four million. For Copeland and Christian, the match. Um, and let's find out where Mercedes is at. I don't think it's even over 1.1 million. So I mean, that's it's bad. It's bad, but I'll find it. You know, um, it is bad. Where's that energy giving Mercedes a match? She's been there for a month. Nothing. Yeah. Where's I mean, that energy? Where, yeah. Where's the whole like? Mercedes is going to be this, this, and that, and all of a sudden it's just like she's not. She can't outdraw a match. It's a problem. Uh, if Tony Khan wanted to air this, taking up television time is not the way to go about it. He could have went on any podcast. I mean, he could have came on here. Air the fucking footage on here. Anywhere. He could have aired yeah. the footage anywhere. Wasting television time when you are about to crown Swerve, a world champion, when you're about to have the, one of the biggest dream matches in professional wrestling ever with Will Ospreay and Brian Danielson, this is what's taking up the majority of yeah. your energy? This? What? 1.4 to 1.1. 1.4 to 1.1, and that was supposed to be one of the biggest debuts in history. And if I go back, Copeland's debut from WrestleDream blows both of them out of the water. So, again, you want to look at ratings, go for it. YouTube and other things are the big metrics here. So, there's a we, we do have an issue in AEW, unfortunately. And, there, uh, there, there is an issue. The issue is writing long-term stories that fucking transcend week-to-week-to-week -to -week -to -week television. Their mindset is in and out. Their mindset is, let me get this match and build a match and a story with the story told in the ring, and, and nothing really gravitates to week-to-week -week television. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. But where, yeah. where is that huge angle that's going to fucking take us emotionally into the next week? Do you, do you have people capable of doing something like that? I don't think so. Clearly, Tony Khan's not capable of it. He's on fucking social media arguing with people about, you know, what they think of his show. Who gives a shit? Who cares? Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. 100% with you. Uh, Adam Copeland did 6.4 million views debuting at WrestleDream. So please, you could miss me with the nobody gives a shit about Copeland. Right now, nobody is caring about Mercedes, and that's a giant problem. It is a problem. It is a huge problem. Copeland, I mean, Copeland, not even, not even him has made a difference. In the ratings, nothing. Yeah. The rate. I mean, I don't give a fuck about the ratings, but clearly people use them as a metric. So I'm gonna go right along with it with everybody saying, you know, the, where where are the ratings? Why aren't the ratings where they need to be? Tony Khan gets his uh, his massive payday from Warner because of everything that he's done and who he signed. Great. Is that going to enhance Tony Khan wanting to book better television, write better television, or is it going to put Tony Khan in more of a lull and get him more lazy because he finally got what he wanted? That's my next concern. Yeah, I don't know. And. Yeah, you know, hopefully all this, what the punk comments would have done for me, like to me, it was would have lit a fire under me. All right, let me show this asshole, because that's what Tony believes, punk is, that I am better than what he said I am. And I'm going to show him by putting on the best television product I possibly can. Instead, we're, we're continuously leaning into this shit. And I hope what we get tomorrow is not what the internet is expecting. And I hope it's a storyline advancement between the Bucks and FDR. Because like I said, if it's not, boy, we are in trouble. Guys, we are going to get into your Super Chats. Thank you for joining us. We had uh, 5,000 plus tonight. I it's mean, a new record for us live. Yeah, on a, on a normal night, Tuesday night. Thank you guys very much for all your support. We're going to get into your Super Chats. Uh, I know it got a little uh, a little heated there, but that's what happens. 
That's what happens. It's a good man. debate show. That's what happens. That's what happens. It's all love. There's no anger. You know, uh, there's uh, and uh, if anybody took what I said personally, I mean that's that's a that's a you problem. I didn't say I didn't say anything about anybody specifically. Uh, I target what I see and what I hear on social media, and I've heard everything from. JD is riding Triple H is uh, you know what to yeah. you know now I'm a Tony Khan mark and this and that. I'm like I can't be a mark for both I'm a mark for good pro wrestling you know well, dude, I'm, they, I'm gonna they voice can't... what I don't like and if you don't like yeah. it tough shit they can't make up their minds with me either one day I'm a WWE shill and then the next day I'm uh, I'm an AEW apologist at the end of the day like I call things as I see them and if I like them I like them and if I don't I don't and if you don't like them good for you but I I this is what I'm going to talk about, and this is what I'm going to say. And whether I say it on here or I say it right to your face, I will say it just like I said it here. There's no bitch in me. They're not the alternative anymore. That's the problem. You know, no. Triple H was the alternative, and now you can't be the alternative when you're battling the alternative. It was easy to be the alternative with Vince McMahon. Now, if you put that energy and apply this fucking energy that you're putting out on Wednesday... To being better than Triple H, being better than what he does, that's where you need to be. I haven't seen none of that. None of it. Yeah. Guys, yeah. thank you so very much, man. We got 1,200 plus likes, and we're going to get into your Super Chats right now. Please follow Drew and I on social media, at JD from NY206, at Andrew Bedala on X. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications, and please go check out the WrestleMania coverage on this channel all weekend long. It is on the homepage if you guys missed any of that stuff. Shout My out to you for working your balls off. Thank you. Tailgates, lives, all that other stuff. I mean, I, I offered you WrestleMania tickets and you went home and, and did stuff for your your fans. And uh, a shout out to you for that. Yeah, man, it's, uh, it's tough. I'm not uh, feeling all that hot, but I appreciate it. And, um, you know, we're going to do it all over again next year because this time next year, this show... It's going to be even bigger. Bang. So. Michael Krause with a $2 super chat. Good Tuesday, J.D. Drew and OTS family. Thank you, Michael. Gabriel with a 25. Meltzer is saying WWE's planning Rock versus Cody at 41 in Minneapolis instead of SummerSlam. Would you be okay with Roman versus Rock being pushed to 42 in Vegas? I personally sure. do want, I mean, I don't mind it, but I would rather not wait because the older the Rock gets, the slower the Rock is going to get. So I don't want to yeah. see that happen. Yeah, let's do the Rock Roman match in Minnesota. Uh, OTS Tribal Queen, thank you for your membership. Tony Brown with a four ninety nine. NXT has more meat than Arby's. Seriously, JD. Yes, the, <laughs> the women's division is, is very attractive. Yes, thank you, Tony. Tony Khan's dealer with a four ninety nine. Oh man. Uh oh. I thought it was a mistake ending Roman's era a little early. A little early. It's four years. AEW now has the more compelling face of the company, MJF. Cody has the charisma of paint. What? <laughs> I think you might be sniffing paint. Oh, fuck. Oh, I, want to, I want to say something to a bunch of people. Um, my buddy, Billy, who you met at the tailgate and EJ, we were in a text, and I want you all to do this exercise. Find a picture from 2020 of August when Roman won the championship. And then find a picture from April of 2024 and look at them side by side and realize how much time has passed. Yeah. How long this reign has actually been. It's insane. My kids were like tiny when Roman first won the championship. They were one years old. Wild. Yeah. 1300 plus days is uh, ending it a little early. I don't know, man. Uh, yeah. Corey Williams with 20 months. I went to WrestleMania 40. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully you had a good time, man. It was an uh, amazing show. Hush with a 499. Man, that all-in footage is going to propel AEW. Can't wait for this next pay-per-view. This CM Punk match at Dynasty is going to be so good. Oh, wait. Yeah. And nonetheless, great stuff tonight, guys, says Hush. Thank you, brother. Uh, Aura Kin with a new membership. Aura Kin, thank you so very much, man. Basic with a 999. It's going to take a while before the casual viewer can understand what they are watching. For those who know, Triple H won't steer the ship off a cliff, unlike Vince. WWE is back. It's gonna be uh it's gonna be something to uh strap in and behold, man. I'm trusting Triple H. I've trusted him for years. 
And I think he's going to take the WWE to where we need it to be. Optic with a $5 super chat. If the all-in footage doesn't prove that CM Punk lied about what actually happened, Tony Khan is screwed tomorrow. Love the show, guys. Yeah, that's why they can't do that. Like, I'm they, and I have a funny feeling they won't. It's got to be an advancement for the Bucks and FTR. Vinny with a 499 wrong. Being in the crowd for Cody's moment was special. I'll never forget it. Love you guys. And thinking of Jesse and his family, Melter sucks. Thank you, Vinny. Dan M with a 499. Do you guys think Roman comes back and gets revenge on Cody for costing him the WWE title? Uh, I think Roman's done with the championship. I think Roman's story right now is bigger than the title. Yeah. And I maybe Roman comes back as a babyface. Dan M, thank you. Phantom with a $100 super chat. This past weekend was so much fun. WrestleMania 40 under Triple H. Was so excited to celebrate all weekend in between working. By Sunday night, I was exhausted, but punch drunk happy for being a wrestling fan. Phantom, I uh, absolutely agree with you. Um, I am still exhausted. I am not recovered yet. Nowhere close. But... That WrestleMania 40 main event on I2 was basically a love letter to WWE and wrestling, honestly. Yeah, 100%. It was everything that you could ever ask for. That main event was unbelievable. Twisted with a 999. Hey, JD, Drew, do you guys think that WWE is hot enough to do Raw in stadiums like how they did the Georgia Dome in Atlanta and Sky Dome in Toronto? It's a really good question. They could set it up for half houses. Yeah. But, I mean, right now, I mean, like, they were just at, you know, during WrestleMania week, and they had about 18,000 at the um, Wells Fargo, and they had to do a smaller stage and stuff like that. I mean, potentially, they could do twenty to 25,000. Yeah, but, I mean, that's a big ass. Like, that's not a lot of people understand how hot Stone Cold Steve Austin was. Tyson Cook with 18 months. I believe The Rock gave Cody Dusty's watch that was pawned. To send Cody to acting school. I heard Dusty gave it to the grandmother to get money for Cody. Yeah, that was my first uh, my first thought, Tyson. And I think Drew has the same thought. For yeah. sure. Average Gamer with a 25. I hope everyone appreciates what Roman did for the company and the fans for the past three years. He really elevated everything around him. My regards to you. Roman absolutely elevated everything. Roman is going to be looked at as the greatest of this generation. For sure. Absolutely. Uh, arrangements for the 499. Hey, Drew, is the stadium that Mania is at next year outside? I was freezing my ass off this past weekend and won't be attending if it's outside again. I don't think it was. So here's here's the deal with that. I think that was the from what Nick Khan said. I got to go watch the interview, but he was 100% um, uh, whatever was put on the internet is 100% accurate. Uh, that was the last deal that WWE inherited, Nick Khan inherited, Minnesota's Dome. Vegas is dome. They're either going to go to warm weather or they're going to be domed. So there you go. Um, Oricon with a 49.99. Hey, JD, I've been watching at the age of 18. I'm turning 26 now. I've been watching through the thick and thin, and I'm happy to now be an active member of the best community out there. As a wrestling fan, I love debates and can take a joke. OTS forever. Thank you, Oricon. You know, it's amazing how many comments I got like that this weekend at the tailgate. How many guys came up to me saying that, man, I've been watching all through high school. I'm like in my early 20s now. Or I've been watching you for 10 years. I think 10 years was the minimum. And then obviously everybody has really taken a liking to what Drew and I have created here. Uh, it's really it's really amazing to see, guys. I, I really don't even know how to answer or kind of attack comments like that, but I mean, you got me talking still after after the whole weekend, man. You guys were amazing. You blew us away. Yeah, and that's what this is all about. Like, there's a mutual respect between myself and JD, and that's why this show um, takes place. Do we agree on everything? Hell no. But at the end of the day, like, we'll sit at a bar and have a drink together, and we don't hate each other, and we never will. So, Jeff, with a new membership. Thank you, brother. Deontay with a five. Hasn't the Cody test been happening? I love Roman, but he was barely here ha as champion. Cody has been the one selling tickets week in and week out. Yes and no, but yes. Well, Cody is the champion now. We'll see how he does as champion. Cody was selling tickets, yes, but are those people going to be here through the thick and then with him as champion? We'll find out. 
Ben Callahan with a $5 Super Chat or Calla Nan with a $5 Super Chat. Hey, J.D. and Drew from Sydney, Australia on Wednesday morning. Love the show and what you guys do. OTS and TNT forever. Thank you, Ben. Noah, 21 months. Love your show as always. Thank you, Noah. Crypto and poker with the two. J.D., how did you survive the Attitude Era? How did I survive the Attitude Era? I didn't have social media. Yeah, he slept on his side, and he got good night's rest. Yeah. What are we talking about? Yeah, I didn't have social media. Metalhead. Five dollars see which I didn't get to mention this last night, but I really like Damian Priest's new theme. Not too far off from the other side, but a bit heavier. Yeah, but it ain't Alter Bridge. So, it could be something good, but it ain't Alter Bridge. Which I'm afraid, if Judgment Day breaks up, where that song is going. Goodbye. Wait, Alter Bridge is breaking up? No, Judge- if Judgment Day breaks up, they're not keeping the song. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they have a permanent license on it, but those licenses are expensive. Cody with a five. If WrestleMania 41 is in Minneapolis, I hope so. Gable deserves a moment. He was born a half an hour from Minneapolis. Come on. Dude is too great. He deserves his moment. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. Guardian of Chaos with a 1999. JD, thanks for taking me personally and the OTS family on this roller coaster of a ride we call pro wrestling. You couldn't. Have two better co-hosts in JD uh, with and Jesse and Drew. Let's fucking roll. Hashtag lifer 50 plus years. Guardian, thank you so much, brother, for all the support, man. It does not go unnoticed. Guardian's a dog. John Cena's bold spot with a $5 super chat. Who do you see being Cody's first program for the title? Maybe heel Orton. No, I do not do no. Orton until next year. <laughs> Come on, John guys. Cena's bold. Y'all are ruthless. Vincent Moore with a five dollars super chat. Rich Holland was a work. He's teaming with Sean Spears. You and don't a- say. NXT are getting a women's North American Championship tournament. Jay says the bloodline is not over. Thanks, Vincent. Behind the fiends with a five. I'm most curious if Roman and Jimmy get excommunicated from the bloodline by Solo, Jacob Fatu, and Tamatonga. I think Roman could be a mega babyface. I did say this months ago. I do think that's where we are possibly headed when Roman and Rock face off. Christopher Holloway with a 990. I love the show. Legitimately a highlight of my week every Tuesday. Do you think they're going to put Jacob Fatu and Tamatanga in a tag team together? I don't know. They could. Jacob Fatu is too good to be in a tag team. Ali, 10. Do you think... Finn Balor is going to be jealous that Damian Priest is champion and you see them go one-on-one for the championship and that will split up Judgment Day. Uh, It's always a possibility, but um, right now, all is cool between the Judgment Day. Behind the Fiends with a five. I'm dreading the cringe AEW show tomorrow. They can't just focus on making their stuff better and got to pop a rating with old CM Punk issues. It's sad. Like Drew said, you know, we'll see if it plays into the FTR Bucks situation and their match at Dynasty. But at that point, I say, who the fuck cares? You know, you're taking time away from Swerve and Joe and putting a highlight on that instead of putting a highlight on Swerve winning the world title. But I don't run the company. Tony Khan does. Stallions Productions with a 499. When do you think Bo Dallas will return as Uncle Howdy? There's a teaser he may return. You think he will be a huge star? Um, He is returning. I don't know when, but... Uh, Social media sleuths have uncovered that uh, there are a lot of uh, Bray Wyatt uh, inside um, nods in that little static that showed up during Bronson Reed's promo. I think some people uncovered Lily the doll in it. I mean, people are going crazy, man. It's like, here we go all over again. That's great. It's great. You want to pay homage to Bray Wyatt? Fantastic. I just hope they do it right. That You got to make a shirt out of that. Social media sleuths. sleuths. I like that. Paul David with 27 months. Hey, guys, final score, Yankees 3, Marlins 2. Great. Drew's a Mets fan. Yeah, I don't give a shit. The Islanders won. There you go. Saya with a 5. If they couldn't get Stone Cold, they could have had Mankind. I love Mankind's music, and it would have been great to see Mankind and Rock together again. Yeah, but it's The Undertaker. Come on. Yeah. Vincent Moore at $2 Super Jet. Final Testament going after the NXT Tag Team titles. Great. So they lost their feud and they're going after the NXT Tag Team titles. How does that make sense? Heisenberg with a 699. Punk really is the top babyface and heel in both companies. Yes. It's amazing. 
Heisenberg better get back to uh, cooking. Basic with a 499. Man, this thing with Punk and AEW is like a bad breakup. TK is hurt. Uh, is like a hurt and bitter ex-girlfriend. Cody Snyder at five. If Punk ever needs to go to sleep, he'll have plenty of options. Living rent-free in so many places. Must be tiresome keeping the industry alive. Oh, man. Saya with a five. Let's hope the footage AEW has been waiting on. CM Punk to go scorch earth on AEW so they can reveal the truth if Punk lied. Let's see it. Adam with a 699. AEW is basically universe mode while WWE is general manager mode. Also, who do you see winning King and Women's Queen of the Ring? I see Gunther and Stratton winning. Those are good two choices. I like Stratton. I think Gunther wins the money in the bank, but I like Stratton. I mean, Jade could win it. You know, they're high on Jade. Lewis with a 499. Nice meeting you at the uh, bar and at the tailgate. Lewis, great show, guys. Again, it was a pleasure meeting both of you. Oricon. all mine, man. There you go. Oricon with a 4999. Truth doesn't mean anything if you hiding bad intentions and deception. I understand why TK would be angry. He looks like any idiot after the interview for trying to play nice. Acknowledging him, though, is a lose-lose situation for the company. I agree. That's I don't think they will. Scribble Stokes with a five. It's foolish to say AEW isn't drawing. Third on cable behind the NBA is not bad at all. With that said, airing this footage is not a good idea. I didn't, I didn't say that they don't draw. I said that they're signing talent that's not outdrawing the current talent they have. That's a problem. Yeah. Yeet with a 199. Hi. And he puts Egghead and JD. Love your videos. Thank you, Yeet. Whitney. 999. Best show on the IWC. Came up the excellent work, guys. Thank you, Whitney. Colin. 10. I've watched AEW after Punk left. But if this footage ends up being of Punk at All In, I may just drop AEW altogether. TK is desperate right now, and it's pathetic. Jake Shepsky with a 199. Punk, Cena one more time. I'll take it. Weston, 27 months. Thanks for a great show tonight, guys. Mercedes came out today on X. Her first match is at Double or Nothing. I'm here for the ride and will always support AEW and our EVPs. That's a fucking mistake. Where did you hear that? On, on X by Mercedes? Double or nothing until yeah, fucking May. That better not be true. You better not. Better not be true. Eric, 17 months. Best podcast in the whole community. Thank you, JD Drew. You guys deserve great things. Blessing always. Thank you, Eric. Thanks, Brandon man. Johnson for the 499. AW seems to continue to prove punk right, especially with punk saying, I work with children at the all out scrum. Scribble. Yeah. I don't what? see anything about Mercedes. Okay, good. I hope that's I, I hope that's not the case. Yeah, she replied it. Go to her replies. Scribble Stokes 20. Before I say, let me say, it is dumb for AEW to air the footage, but WWE has done this a lot. Billionaire Ted, Pillman's wife, DX Midget Brett, Katie Vick, Heyman and Stephanie trolling Chicago over punk. It's all dumb. Um, we have, oh boy, um, what's the matter? I lost my place. Where the hell is, uh, we had just so many come in. Yeah, I see that. Uh, Scribble Stokes. Thank you, brother. Uh, Mick Swag Burger XL, uh, 499 Drew. Are you a Timberwolves fan? Ant 50 piece tonight. How you guys doing? 50 Nuggets? Uh, Barbecue, no, uh, sweet and sour. I know what it means. No, yeah. I'm not a Timberwolves fan. Gotham guy. $10 super chat. Uh, guys, honesty. In all honesty, AW ratings were always in the mid-800s, even with Punk there. In fact, the Punk-MJF match in Chicago got only 725000 remember? And that was compelling storytelling. Sure. CM Punk drew like one point something million on a, what was it, a Friday night? And CM Punk has the highest, I mean, the, the pay-per-view buy rates were... Through the roof with CM Punk. Uh, she did reply, double or nothing. Will you be on Dynamite tomorrow, CEO? Of course. When are you fighting, CEO? Double or nothing. Oh, boy. Not having a match at Dynasty? Like, not even a tag? What uh, What an investment there, huh? We can't even get her to do a tag? 
Jamel Turney with a 499. Does MJF have his own locker room? If not, why does Mercedes? Because I know in other sports that stuff will cause resentment. Also, get her in a match. CM Punk touched on this. He thought that the individual locker rooms were garbage. So I do believe that they do. Some people do have individual locker rooms. Uh, Scum Dog, 421 month. I think TK airing the Punk Perry fight is very stupid of him, and it makes me not want to watch AEW anymore. TK has his priorities all messed up. I agree. We got to wait and see what it is. Troll or not. You'll, you'll have the platform tomorrow to talk about it. If it's bad, you'll hear from it. Tony's Snow Mountain, the <laughs> four. Four ninety nine, Tony being this desperate for viewership is insane. You can tell the man's looking for anything. That's the way it comes off. Yeah, Mercedes does not have a match currently on Dynamite. That's fucking boy or that's, Dynasty. That's ridiculous. Furious Nation with a four ninety nine. What's up, JD and Drew? What a WrestleMania weekend. Spot on as always, and it's a shame what TK is doing with tomorrow. Looking forward to review tomorrow. Thank you, here's, Nation. Here's the announced match for Double or Nothing. Hart or Willow Nightingale versus Mercedes Monet for the TBS Championship yep. at Double or Nothing. Yep. Unbelievable. Amer yeah, and uh, yeah, some ratings, huh? Uh, uh, rankings. No rankings for her. Not one match. She's getting a title match. American Hippie 7, 499. Rock versus Cody at SummerSlam. Bloodline Civil War Survivor Series to set up WrestleMania with Rock Roman versus uh, Rock at WrestleMania 41. Yes. Rock Roman at WrestleMania 41. That's the way I would do it. Yeah. Keith Hobson with a $10. I have a strange feeling that they're going to reverse this situation to a horror show. OTS for life. Thank you, Keith. Brandon Johnson with a 499. I got a feeling Punk is telling the truth, maybe with a little exaggeration, but not enough to make it a big deal. Why would Punk lie? I mean, what, what, what is it for Punk to lie? Honestly. Chris with a 499. What's up, TNT crew? Fantastic show as always. Question for you, fellas. SummerSlam 2024, Rock vs. Cody. Drew vs. Punk, and Reigns vs. Rollins. Thoughts? Could be. Sure. I could see it. Nicholas Romero, the 999. After being a company for five years, when AEW have learned to grow and focus on the company and its problems to make it better, but rather focus on something that shouldn't matter to them anymore. You would think. There's a lot of problems that they just continue to ignore. Thinking that everything they do is right. That's a problem. Theme Parks with Johnny. 17 months. Keep up the great work, guys. And JD, Drew, I love your honesty when it comes to these topics. So sick of the tribalism. Bullshit from both WWE and AEW marks. You know, Tony Khan adds to the tribalism. I don't think he realizes that. Furious Nation with a 499 with WWE Draft coming up. Do you guys think there will be a mock draft? Or you will be doing a mock draft. Also, I trust Triple H. To make the Raw and SmackDown rosters even. Thoughts. He will. And no, we're not doing a mock draft. Clone Force with a 499. If this was Vince running WWE still, then I would say, yeah, they will turn him. But Triple H and his team will take care of Cody and he will be fine. Uh, Rich Mulatto with a 199. Do you accept the Lord Satan as a supreme being? No, I do not. I do not see. Stop. Thomas, $10 Super Chat. It said that AEW is all eager wrestling. Now they need to focus on their product. Maybe AEW and WWE should invade each other's shows and have a cross PLE. OTS for life. Hope Jesse feels better soon. Thank you, Thomas. No, they will never, ever work together. Only in 2K24. Midmost Mark with a 20. TK releasing this footage in the context we think is a mistake. However, he's an admitted emotional decision maker. And after all the not-so-subtle shots from Punk and WWE, I'm curious to see the angle. Let's have court. Like Drew said, we'll, we'll see it play out tomorrow. You know, maybe maybe it is to build a match, but who gives a shit? TK Banks, $5 Super Chat. Dustin needs to finish his story and win the title. His brother never did. Hashtag, we want Dustin. No. Stop. We're not getting fucking Dustin Rhodes winning the world championship. John Cena. No. John Cena's ball spot with a five. If they do Bloodline Civil War at Survivor Series, who would you have make up Roman and Rock's teams? Well, we talked about it earlier. Yep. George, five. How do you feel about King of the Ring, Gunther, and Queen of the Ring, Jade? And Money in the Bank, Stratton, or LA Knight? Uh, Gunther, yes. Jade for Queen of the Ring? She'd have to wrestle more than 30 seconds. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and Will Chisholm with a five dollars super chat. Why does it feel like Tony gave Mercedes the Roman deal with limited matches? Because Double or Nothing is way long for her first match. I'll rant about that tomorrow, man. I don't like what I'm hearing. 
Get the woman in the ring. Anyway, guys, uh, we are getting out of here. Thank you for 5,000 plus on this Tuesday night uh, when uh, you think we can't get any better. There we are. Anyway, any parting words, man, before I uh, hit the end stream here? Love one another, respect one another, be good to one another. All we have is one another. There you go. Thank you guys for a great weekend. We will do it all over again, and you will find out soon. Forbidden Doors coming up. Drew and I may be doing something then. We'll let you know. Thank you for a great show. Follow us on social media, at JD from NY206. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Cameo, at Andrew Bedala on X. Crunchy Sock with a 199. Go Yanks. Sure. And go check out Roast. the WrestleMania cover. What? Gross Crunchy Sock. Uh, I don't know. And, and go check out all the other content on the channel. Please make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and that thumbs up. We'll see you guys next week for episode 44 of Tuesday Night Titans. We'll see you guys later. With the power of